All right. Hi there, everyone. How are you doing? It's Jeff C. from Free Radio Revolution, and I am welcoming you to another edition, our second edition. It's only our second show. Um, we'll do it live, the Real Alternative Podcast here tonight, and uh, I am, of course, with my co-host and good buddy, Red Pill Revolution. How are you doing, Red Pill? How's everyone doing? We're doing it live. I'm great. Awesome. <laughs> Excited to get started here. Awesome. Awesome. So on the panel, of course, we have the lovely Kate Slate. Kate, how are you doing? Hey, everybody. Great. So nice that you can be here um, this week. Okay, so, and our guest this week, uh, we're also going to have Dave come on the panel a bit later. He's going to be late. He's been tied up. Um, our guest this week are Aaron from, Free, uh, sorry, Police State Radio. Hey, Aaron, how are you doing? Very good, Jeff. Thanks for having me on. Awesome. And, of course, we have the Ottawa expositor, uh, Justin Bryant. Justin, how are you doing, buddy? Not too bad. It's uh, great to be on. Thank you very much. Oh, it's my pleasure. Okay, so great. What we wanted to talk about today, and uh, this is a, a pretty apt topic because it's been all over the news. Of course, we get these uh, high-profile celebrities' deaths. They always seem to come in threes. <laughs> Go figure. And they always seem to be coded in our pop culture. Uh, this latest case, of course, dealing with Robin Williams, uh, uh, former Oscar winner, uh, huge celebrity, one of the most talented comedians, I'd say, the last 50 years out of the United States, an absolute amazing talent. And Dave is asking me for a link. Dave! <laughs> okay, so um, hang on one second here. Um, maybe somebody else can get that. I just want to keep going here for a sec. Um, yeah, so... What we were what we were noticing, of course, is that uh, right away uh, a, a YouTuber by the name of Mark Dice came out with a video, basically saying that uh, instantly, as soon as the, the the news was announced, that conspiracy conspiracy theorists or, or or saying that Mark Dice Mark Dice was killed by the Illuminati, you know, like he always does, and basically mocking people even before <laughs> any videos or anything had been posted online. And so it, it was like Dice, once again, getting the jump uh, out of the gate, wanting to get those massive views. I think his video, if I'm not mistaken, has like 150,000 views, something ridiculous, astronomical. And you're talking about somebody who makes money off their YouTube channel, who monetizes their stuff. And I have no problem with that, but when you're, you're throwing around a whole lot of bullshit, that's a bit of a problem. So we have this celebrity death. We have all the, the, the Illuminati, you know, uh, signs in the culture, in the uh, television, and in this particular case it was the BBC that was airing a show uh, called The Family Guy in which the lead character, um, does anybody know his name? <laughs> I don't watch the show, but the big fat guy. <laughs> the right? big fat guy. Peter Griffin. Peter Griffin, sir. Peter Griffin, Peter Griffin. Sorry about that, I'm not a pop culture guy, but yeah, so anyways, Peter Griffin, uh, he made some sort of, he was upset because there was a roast about Robin Williams, so he was very upset, and he made some sort of wish, and he got struck by lightning, and he wished that everyone would turn into Robin Williams, and what happened was when he woke up, he had the Midas touch, he, everything he touched turned into Robin Williams. And so he was surrounded by gazillions of Robin Williams, and he was losing his mind, so he tried to kill himself in this uh, segment. And uh, right as the segment was ending, the news came across the BBC that Robin Williams had indeed taken his life. So once again, we saw a, 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 a perfect example of how this works, how these high-profile celebrities were. And for Paul uh, Walker... Um, always seem to be encoded. There's always uh, a sort of foreshadowing within our media that is, is, you know, it's beyond the realm of coincidence. So what I wanted to talk about, basically, starting off here, is uh, Mark Dice himself, the attack that he's been launching against truther channels. I mean, he really seems to be a uh, div divisive uh, sort of force within the internet. He has, uh, he's also, a, a, I think, uh, very much a gatekeeper. Somebody that's meant to be there in order to bring people in, to usher them in gently into this sort of new world order and then keep them from taking the next step, from really finding out what's going on. And we run into this problem because we end up going head to head with this guy, uh, often clashing with him, uh, whether it be in comments or videos that we've done. 
Um, and he would often turn around and ridicule us for our work in exposing false flags like uh, the Isla Vista recent one or Sandy Hook or the Boston Marathon bombing. And this is a serious, serious problem because we know, we do the research, we do all the work, and then we have this joker who has his 300,000 subscribers, which he spends half his time insulting <laughs> in his videos, um, calling them mentally inflamed morons, right? And, uh, you know, this is what we're up against. So I hand it over to you, Red Pill. What do you have to say about all this? Whoa, well... Goodness, where do I begin? Okay, well, I think you put it so well that I think what people need to realize first and foremost is that it is so absolutely very important that uh, we expose what's going on here with these uh, alternative media figures and what they're doing because it's like they're in a war pretty much against us, against people, uh, against the alternative to the alternative, so to speak, right? And exactly. It seems like they're contradicting what they're saying. They're... Um, you know they're alienating us and and people who uh, want to learn about this completely uh, leading them astray and so I think it's very important to expose these figures and what they're doing because uh, this is just destroying everything that we're working so uh, hard to expose and wake people up so you know it's not about anything it's not about jealousy it's not about it, it's just about the truth and so I feel it's very important that we expose this and what's going on right now is absolutely disgusting and it's sickening and so uh, these these people like Dice and the rest of them need to be exposed. It's very important. Yeah. <clears throat> yes, yeah, exactly. Go yeah. ahead, drop. Go ahead, Aaron. He's got the monopoly on conspiracy. He can <laughs> he can write books and sell books about con conspiracy nut job theories, but anybody that thinks about Sandy Hook or anything else is a conspiracy nut job. Yeah, because it's okay to, to think that Kesha is drinking her own pee. <laughs> it's yeah. okay to go on about uh, Rihanna's Illuminati tattoo. It's okay to go on about, uh, you know, uh, Jay-Z and his Do What Thou Wilt uh, clothing line or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the stuff that you'll get on Mark Dice's yeah, yeah, channel. Right. But exactly. when you delve into the real, uh, what's really going on, and we, we talk about all the fake shootings, the hoaxes, that is a huge deal. Sandy yeah. Hook is a huge deal. When they're using Sandy Hook to, you know, destroy your constitutional rights, they're using it to take away your right to defend yourself. It's pretty damn important to understand what exactly happened at that uh, at that, that particular um, uh, story, right? And uh, that's what we're up against. Yeah, I think I think one of the biggest problems is is that it it does trivialize all the work that is done to expose. Um, the, the, the true the actions done by the New World Order. I mean, it, it's one thing to specialize on uh, celebrities and, and Hollywood and one and whatnot. Uh, I'm not going to uh, rag on ev uh, everybody who specializes on that because I think it's kind of important to show that too. However, if you're going to just show that as like really the only thing that they're doing, they're just flashing some signs here and there and drinking each other's piss. You know what I mean? They're they're <laughs> taking away. <laughs> what's what's going? What's what's really going on? What they're really doing to the people, you know? And uh, anybody who questions that is usually the uh, target of uh, one of his rants. That mm -hmm. you know, it's brutal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also what you see constantly is him. I mean, <laughs> I see this almost every time he does a video. He goes, well, if you want, if you want to see like the mentally enslaved morons, just take a look at the comments below. You know, it's his own audience that he insults. In his latest video, he said something unbelievable. I know it's a joke, right? I'm not going to take it seriously, but I actually put up a video on it, and what he said is that he even has it in his mind to give David Rockefeller a call, you know, and, and get himself let in so that um, they can fulfill the Georgia Guidestones and, uh, you know, get rid of the useless eaters. I mean, he said that in his video today. Right, he's being cheeky again, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And, I think, and go ahead. I, I think like the worst part is is that I uh, I expect him to say these kind of things. You know what I mean? Like this something, mm -hmm. this kind of stuff is expected of his mentality. Yes. Yeah, and yeah. the worst part is is he's the one 
that, um, like say I don't look any, it look up anything, uh, and I'm just on the YouTube home front, and it knows I look so, uh, I look up uh, conspiracy <laughs> stuff. Um, it'll recommend the only thing that I will, I'll never get you, Jeff, or Red Pill. <laughs> I mean, people with thousands of subscribers. But what I'll what I'll get every time is Mark Dice's, uh, Alex Jones. I'm not even subscribed to them. Like I will check into them, like you know, semi often or whatnot. But I don't subscribe to them. But I get my their videos forced on me all day long. I mean, like this is like really? the new people that are not uh, that are not privy to the fact that these guys are hardcore shills. They are shilling, and they don't know this yet. So these are the people that are just going to click on that because it looks interesting. They got a good title, you know. They got Leanne McAdoo on every now and then, McAdoo. you know. It's, yeah, buddy. I saw she, she was really toning it down for the past couple of weeks. Hey, have you seen I, that? I think uh, my video might have had an effect. <laughs> <laughs> I think it has. I bet that, with yeah, Al Bundy, damage, that damage, look yeah. on Al Bundy's face. Man. I, I lost a lot of subscribers over that video, so uh, I hope it has some positive effect because... <laughs> but well, uh, what, I think, I think my... it served this point. I think it did. I really think, I mean, some people might have got offended, but I think you woke up a lot of people. And, you know, I, I wouldn't worry about those who can't take the heat on that one. because. Oh, no, I don't, I don't. Uh, yeah, I mean, that, that, I mean, to me, the game, all right, and we talk about the game that the corporate media plays. Well, this game is being played <laughs> by the alternative media, and we're talking the big, or we could even call them pseudo-alternative media. I don't know what you want to call them, but, you uh, know, the, the big the channels. Mainstream alternative media. Yeah, the mainstream alternative media like Alex Jones, right? Uh, Mark Dice, right? And I, I don't even know how Mark Dice could qualify as news because he doesn't give you any news. I mean, all he does is read off TMZ, basically, and make his retard voice. Right. <laughs> so, now, uh, I mean, yeah. I want to, I want to uh, uh, introduce Dave. He just came in. Mm. Hey, hey, what's up, guys? Hey, guys. Uh, Dave, hey, Dave. Uh, Dave from Free Agent Media. Thanks for joining us, man. It's good to have you. Yeah, Dave, what are your thoughts on, on what we've been discussing here? Yeah, well, I think you guys all, you know, touch on some really good points there. Um, yeah, definitely they're shilling, they're, they're controlled opposition all the way, and we do need to be worried about these guys, uh, you know, to a certain extent, but I think Jeff touched on something earlier. You just have to read the comments and, and look at the dislikes on all of his videos. I mean, most of his videos have more dislikes than likes, and, I mean, sure, he has a lot of subscribers, but, you know, the videos themselves don't get huge views. Um, and you read some of the comments, and it's like, oh, Mark, what happened? You know, we used to like your videos. Now you're different. Like, your videos or suck. You're like, a fucking gigs, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. So, well, I, think, I think a lot of the subscribers, like me, I'm, I'm still subscribed to him. I'm still subscribed to Alex Jones and AMTV to keep an eye on these guys, right? To, to uh, you know, every once in a while read the comments and you know, look in on the videos and see what kind of bullshit they're they're spewing today, you know? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's that's pretty much my take on it. I mean, I think we, we do have to worry about them because they're, you know, actively putting out disinfo um, and sort of leading the uh, the sheeple astray. And, and not just the sheeple, but, you know, people who actually would be interested in, in caring about you know, these issues and, and the alternative media if they were just led in the right direction, you know? Yeah, they so, trivialize them, right? Shilling like a villain. Shilling yeah. like a villain, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, the, the, you uh, know, it, it makes everything trivial when, when you get a guy like this coming in and, you know, like instantly shutting people down right away when it comes to something like Sandy Hook. Now, Sandy Hook, he's been bashed to no end. I mean, if you look at his videos and you look up the Sandy Hook ones, those have the worst ratings of all. I mean, the <laughs> approval rating is, is like 10%, right, or something uh, so, uh, you know, small. It's just, it's unbelievable. And yet he continually comes back, continually attacks Sandy Hook truthers. He has called Sandy Hook truthers every name in the book, lunatics, you know, mentally oh, deranged. Oh, they love lunatics. Uh, yeah, Exactly. <laughs> So, you know, and, and that is a dangerous thing. It w maybe it's not so dangerous in the sense that most people can see through it, right? But I'm talking about that, that portion of the audience, which is ever-growing. I mean, there's a lot more people waking up now than there was, say, two years ago. Um, when I started, or two and a half years ago, when I started doing uh, Free Radio Revolution, it, it's, there's a lot more people awake now, but at the same time, they're being herded away by these disinfo channels like Mark Dice and led off the path of real investigation right. and pushed into this 
don't even bother going there because you're a lunatic if you do. Well, I, I think we touched on this in an earlier podcast that, you know, uh, the hope, like many of us who sort of uh, got woken up over over a, a period of time and got exposed to Alex Jones and, and Mark Dice and stuff and, you know, actually watched their videos actively. And, and then, like like I said earlier, we, we, we hope that we mature f uh, away from that and into, you know, the Corbett reports and uh, Boiling Frogs post and, and, you know, our channels, like the really... Good stuff, you know, with people who are actually trying to make a difference as opposed to, you know, just making money. Yeah, really, because exactly. if you spend all your time ridiculing other truthers, which is what Mark Dice does, I mean, yeah. <laughs> ridiculing his audience, ridiculing other truthers, and other truthers, because he's not a truther himself. He's the furthest no. thing. From and he, he alienates himself, right? He puts, he puts himself in with the Alex Joneses and other shilks, you know? Right. I mean, he brings belligerence to the fore, you know, like... It, it, this is the way yeah, he's, you know what he's he's, he's an instigator. Yeah, this is how people should speak to each other. I just I, yeah I, exactly. I just want to say um, we I think we reached a point you know and that's why I, I really am excited to be a part of what we're doing because we reached a point where people are waking up to uh, these sort of figures and to uh, this mainstream controlled aspect of our movement and people are you know are hungry for real truth and bias you know really real hungry research. for the truth man you're yeah, absolutely real, right real research in what we're doing and so yeah, accuracy accountability transparency people want that. Right, and so and so that's why I feel like it's so important. I feel like what we're doing, and 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 that's why I really enjoy being a part of it. And I feel like we're doing something important there, as far as getting more different information than what those fakers and sellouts are providing. And um, so that's that's how I feel about that. Well, let's put it this way. Um, I heard somebody who saw the back end of uh, Infowars and and the Alex Jones show. Um, and usually their view duration is no more than about three minutes. Now, if you put that in perspective, their average show is usually, what, like four hours, three hours for one of those big ones? Mm -hmm. With uh, the nightly news, I believe that's called. Um, so when you take a look at that, and then you compare that and the amount of comments and the feedback and stuff to uh, most of the larger channels in our pocket of YouTube, you know, I would say there's a lot more involvement. Most people who look up those um, uh, look up those websites and watch those videos, either they're probably sick of Alex Jones. About one minute in, they're just trying to get a scoop and they don't know where else to go. We got to get this out here. <laughs> yeah, so man. true. I mean, I notice that all the time. Um, that's why I'm thankful. I, I think that you know, we some people tend to put too much sort of credence into subs and how many subs you got and stuff like that. When really, it's 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 about how many people are partaking in the conversation. And I look at my videos and and you know, two three hundred comments per video. I'm thrilled to see that I have such a lively. Uh, engaged audience and I take that as a compliment because I will take down my videos I took down a video last or early this morning because I realized I made a mistake I uh, wrongly attributed a, 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 a blog post to Robin Williams and then my listeners who always keep me honest I gotta thank them uh, a lot of them came forth and said, no, it actually wasn't Robin Williams. It was a blogger who was, who was somehow pretending to be Robin Williams or something like that. So I just pulled the video right away. You know, and Jeff, you, you don't, yeah. sorry, you don't, you don't have to pull those videos down. You can add, like, YouTube an annotations and just, like, correct it. No, but I, I'd rather not put up something that's not real, um, especially, I mean, if it's a tiny mistake or something, I can put an annotation. But if I, if I put up a video saying, this is Robin Williams' last blog, and I made a mistake on it. Um, well, sure, that, that's your call, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, for sure I'm going to take it down and not even think twice about it. You just hit that delete button. And I've done that you know, dozens of times with my videos because I believe it's very important not to put out misinformation. And the work that we do, I mean, the, the realm that we're in, we talk about, say, for instance, false flags. Um, that is, it's, it's a very... Um, you know, we're under the microscope. We're under. We're we're a target. You know, we we I get death threats like there's no tomorrow. Um, I get all kinds of insults. Uh, just people pretending I knew somebody that knew somebody kind of thing, right? And um, we're constantly being attacked from all sides. And then, of course, we get the Mark Dice attacks to be thrown on top of all of that, where Mark Dice will come out and say, look at these lunatics. They actually think that nobody died at Sandy Hook. <laughs> and it's like. 
this is the battle that we are fighting uh, right now in order to try to get the truth across, to try to reach uh, as many years as we can, um, you know, to try to get the important messages out there. And I feel in a way, you know, today, to, you know, talking about Robin Williams, it's really not that important in my mind when a celebrity dies. Uh, you know, it's, it's, he had a good life, he's very successful and, and all that, so it's not all that big of a deal. Yet, the elites have their ways, they have their satanic rituals, they have their ways of coding these things, they have their ways of telegraphing who's going to die when, you know, messages coming up on, on, on uh, what was it, IGN, uh, uh, dot com uh, web boards where people were saying Robin Williams going to die in a couple days and he did you know how does this stuff get out how is it all a program that then you get the Mark Dice people that come on and say you're a bunch of freaking lunatics you think the BBC is part of the New World Order <laughs> right <laughs> yeah, and yeah. The BBC is is perpetually putting out this kind of mind control if in fact uh, it, we were used to CNN and uh, you know Fox News and stuff like that CBC here in Canada but the BBC is really at the, the apex of mind control and I yes. have done a lot of work exposing the BBC for instance recently during the match of the day where they started flashing all these Illuminati symbols and it's like what the hell are they doing it's a soccer game and they're flashing numerous Illuminati symbols and I had to slow down the video so slowly to show what the symbols were and uh, they play these games with us all the time and if you expose these things well then you get the, 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 the characters like Mark Dice that come out of the woodwork and label you a conspiracy kook right mm -hmm. yeah. well <clears throat> right. I think and, and I mean what oh, sorry go ahead sorry red pill please go ahead no, definitely not. You first. <laughs> oh, oh, that's how it is around here, is it? No, okay, no, I'm just joking. <laughs> I think what it comes down to really is, um, like, Jeff, you were speaking about, you take down your videos if you believe that uh, something's wrong. And the annotation, that's a good point as well. I can't see the annotations on, on mine, because, um, so it actually doesn't show. So I think I, I kind of especially appreciate it if, if Jeff does take down stuff when he, when he uh, finds that it is wrong, which we all do. And, and I'm not just singling him out. I, because, you know, when it comes down to, it, it's the integrity that you, like, we, we face a lot of trials because we try and get this truth out. You know, like, from our family, from, from people on the Internet, from, from like, trolls, shills, what, whoever it is. Like we we have to put up a lot of stuff. So when we make a problem, to have the integrity um, to uh, to resolve that issue, um, I think that's a really noble thing. And <laughs> Mark Dice, people like Mark Dice, I don't think he would understand what I'm talking about right now. You know what I mean? Alien to his being. <laughs> I, I think because I like when I love. He brought up. He just wants to call up David Rockefeller, um, and I, I almost wonder. It's like, is he a shill or is the personality? Like, is this true? Is this a natural thing? Is has he been paid? Like, is it a bit of both? What do you think, this guy? Like, it. it I don't well, know yeah, if every exactly. shill well, is a shill. I, Go ahead. I, I like to I like to play the opposite rule, and that's actually something that uh, Sibel Edmonds also likes to do. Um, if Mark Dice is telling us that the Illuminati couldn't have killed Robin Williams, guess what? The Illuminati probably killed Robin Williams. <laughs> yeah. you know? um, yeah. you know, and it sort of it applies to CNN. It applies to all these things. Like, so if we sort of know already right off the bat that they're shills, whatever they're telling us, the opposite is probably the truth. Exactly. Yeah, that's a good way to approach it. <laughs> and even well, I think about it, why, why, would, why would Mark Dice even be talking about Robin Williams if it wasn't like important to, to, um, to counteract what well, we're saying? Happened? Well, exact, exactly. Let's, let's put this into perspective, okay, guys? Well, what did Jeff see? You alluded to in your first video on this, I think, that they all sort of came out together with a, a coordinated kind of disinfo uh, strategy mm -hmm. on this Robin Williams issue in the predictive program yeah. in Family Guy bombshell and immediately Mark Dice came out what minutes an hour within uh, yeah. talking about uh, conspiracy nobody talked about it nobody put up a damn thing on the internet and he hey, came hey, out what saying that oh it's a crazy conspiracy theory no one has even said it he had his video up before Mox News did <laughs> you know, with hey, the news uh, I, heard, I heard them talk about Twitter now I, listen I, I know that some of us are on Twitter 
But when I look this stuff up, man, it, it's not about the false flags for the most part. Most people aren't talking about that. So like, what, what they're probably doing, and I'm starting to see like a little system. You, you have these people like, uh, uh, I won't want to mention too many names, but one was mentioned before, like Dallas Goldbug and <laughs> Well Aware One. And, and the whatever aliases that he has, um, like a, a banker puppet Obama. Have you ever seen this guy around? That's totally him. Same style <laughs> of writing. That's and he, no, that's him. He has written on on that criticism video that you did. Um, oh, he's all and over. And he's, he's always be been writing person. on my videos. Oh, he's, I would say, he's listening I'd say now. He's the number one puppet. poster on my videos, to be, to be yeah, honest man. with you. He's, he's everywhere in all yeah. forms, right? So this is what happens. You have people like this who are probably paid to put in this dif disinfo. And then people like Mark Dice and Paul Joseph Watson did this too. He, he was reading out some of the posts that were just ludicrous. We're going we're gonna to do this right picking. now. In fact, I'm going to play the part. I'm going to ask you guys to not speak in your microphone. I'm going to play the part that uh, Mark Di uh, sorry, Paul Joseph Watson says in his latest video off Planet Infowars. Um, regarding the crazy conspiracy theorists who uh, think that uh, you know uh, the Illuminati had something to do with it, so I want you, everyone to listen in here. And, uh, here we go. The that the death of Robin Williams was announced just as this ended, and before the mainstream media writes hit pieces about Infowars claiming the Illuminati killed Robin Williams, no, that's not what I'm saying. Although a lot of people in the conspiracy community are claiming precisely that. Here's one example. I am leaning on the possibility he was taken out by the powers that be, but I can't possibly fathom why he hasn't been relevant to the mainstream for a while unless he did something behind the scenes and pissed them off, then it makes no sense. Unless he won in a line of sacrifices during this lunar time. So of course, as we unfortunately are all too aware of, whenever somebody in Hollywood dies, the lunatics immediately come out of the woodwork and make YouTube videos about how it was an Illuminati sacrifice. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying it's an interesting coincidence. And in fact, going beyond that, it's intriguing to delve into what Carl Jung called synchronicity, which is defined as the experience of two or more events which occur in a meaningful manner, but which are causally unrelated. So this was the idea, which is obviously being challenged by other philosophers, of meaningful coincidence. And it basically became the underpin. For <laughs> and meaningful. I think we got enough of that, right? Um, uh, I really had an issue with this video, and I don't mean to single out uh, Paul Joseph Watson, because I think he does some really good work. I don't know how much he has bought and controlled. I have no idea. Um, but I think that that video alone really rubbed me the wrong way, the way that he, he immediately came out and labeled we're lunatics, right? That's what lunatics think. Yeah, same and, uh, thing as Mark The occult would have anything to do with any death that happened to a major celebrity in Hollywood, especially since it's been coded all over the, the corporate media, <laughs> you know? And uh, right. I'm going to read a quote here from our friend Betsy McGee, who has the top comment on this, 124 thumbs up. Uh, she says, how many times is this, uh, is this going to happen on Family Guy and people are just going to marvel at the amazing coincidence and synchronicity of the damn universe? And then she quotes Ian Fleming here, once is happenstance, twice is coincidence, three times is enemy action. <laughs> Yes, I saw that comment by Betsy. That was a great comment. Yeah, yeah was. Okay. Like, I'd just like to point out that this is the kind of stuff I'm talking about. This is the, the kind of uh, uh, stone that we got to turn over. This is comments like Betsy and her stating that, you know what, she's waking up to the so-called honeypot, right, that is InfoWars and this, and she's, be she's beginning to see the light, right? And this exactly. is what I'm talking about. We need to show people... The, the right way, uh, obviously, and this is what's happening now, especially now they're exposing themselves more than ever before, and this is just ludicrous. It's gone overboard. It's too much. It's time to freaking, you know, draw the line, and enough is enough. So. You know, and it, it really displays the, the, the two, two-fold or two-faced nature of, of Mark Dice, and perhaps you could even say Infowars, and the fact that they always go on, uh, Mark Dice always goes on about the Illuminati, right? He knows everything about the Illuminati, right? They know everything about the Illuminati. When, the, when, when, yeah. when the original name was, where the Skull and Bones uh, fraternity is at Yale University, 
right? Who were the original members? Uh, Adam Weishaupt. Adam Weishaupt. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> so he's got to go on and on about how, yeah. and he does this every single freaking fucking video where he goes on. I bet they don't even know this. So they don't even know that. Or they didn't know the name of this person. And he does it every single time. And, like, that has any fucking meaning today. That has no, any meaning wait, whatsoever. Wait, 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 Jeff, 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 Jeff. <laughs> you, Jeff, hold on. I'll have to stop you there. Do you actually know where the name Jekyll originated from? Because if you don't, then... You have no business talking about conspiracy. Exactly. You can't talk about Jekyll Island. You can't talk about it, Federal Reserve. You can't it's talk an about informal anything. fallacy. It, I forget the name, name of it. Um, I remember having to look it up one time uh, because I couldn't say the, the third tenor out of the three tenors. Uh, I wasn't uh, someone who could sing in the tenor range. Uh, I had someone said that to me one time. It, it, it's, all of this is completely... If, if they looked up a book on logic, they... Uh, it would be, it, it's just completely antithetical to it. Like, so the, what he was just speaking about just then, when he was picking out um, the most ludicrous comments you could possibly find on the internet, possibly Dallas Goldbug's uh, very comments, you know, and it's called a cherry picking fallacy to the point where he uses that then to blame everybody as lunatics, which is then in its own right a guilt by association fallacy. You're mm -hmm. taking one wrong thing and blaming it on everybody else in that group. And on top of that, you're also, the whole thing in itself is a straw man because you're taking some nutbags comments and you're putting it up. So it's just this big woven fiber of fucking craziness. Logical fallacies. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, that's it. it it's one just on top like, of each other, like a or Jenga like, thing. Or like, I told, uh, or like I told Press Reset last night, uh, raw sewage coming out of these people's mouths. But um, now, now, Paul Joseph Watson, so I, I want to get into it with, with Watson, though, and see and emphasize the importance here of the, the contradictions that they're making here. All right? They're just walking contradictions now. You, you're telling me InfoWars, Paul Joseph Watson, Mark Dice knows about the Illuminati. They know about the New World Order, yet they're trying to debunk predictive programming which we all know is part of their what they do. So now what? Predictive programming just doesn't exist anymore. You know, it just doesn't exist. And we're all lunatics for believing in it. Mm -hmm. You have got to be shitting me, people. Sounds very Orwellian to me. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's so, double speak. It, it really is. I mean, it's, it's like... Speak. Exactly. They, they constantly go on about these things, and then when they arise, they don't exist. They pretend, well, you're crazy. I can't believe you believe the Illuminati. You need to read my book on the Illuminati. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it, it's such a joke. It's so freaking ridiculous. All he does the is only... be the Illuminati. And then, of course, when anything is attributed to them, well, you're a lunatic. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. The, only, the, the Illuminati exists only as I write how it exists. Buy my book. Yes. Buy my book. Oh, man. Well, uh, you know, Subscribe if you're new. You know, it's funny. I, I, am I mistaken, guys? I don't know if, uh, this, is, this, if this is true, uh, but I'm pretty sure Alex Jones has done before exposés on 9-11 predictive programming, right? So they know they do that. They incorporate that, and they do this magic right, within right, right. the media. So how can yeah. his puppet... Watson call us lunatics for thinking there's predictive programming in this obvious, beyond coincidental uh, piece in Family Guy. You know how can they do this and contradict themselves? It makes yeah, absolutely yeah, yeah. zero sense. The only conclusion is they're controlled. That's it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, there's or, a big difference between not knowing and choosing not to remember. I'm about to go Jeff C on everyone here. <laughs> <laughs> there's also another possibility which could kind of be blended in with what Red Pill is saying in a way. They're trying to avoid the smear jobs of the corporate media as well because they know that if they, 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 they say anything like the Illuminati is involved, it's going to be on you know Fox News or CNN and it's going to be Alex Jones thinks the Illuminati killed Robin Williams. And so they might be looking at it from a financial point of view from yeah. uh, you know, like, sure. like a self-censorship in order to avoid you know, uh, being smeared by the corporate media. And uh, that's what happens. It's funny because then the corporate, like whenever I go on videos, say, and I leave a comment, say if it's a Boston bombing video, right, um, 
or it's you know Sandy Hook or something like that. And the people that the shills, either they're paid shills or they're just idiots, right? That come on and say you're one of those Alex Jones lunatics that thinks it's all done by the Illuminati, and it's like no, no, Alex Jones doesn't cover these things. He doesn't touch up with a ten foot pole. He hasn't put anything into Sandy Hook other than sending uh, what's his name there. Um, the Dan Badandi, bumbling Dan Badandi. <laughs> Dan Badandi. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. no. <laughs> bionic, bionic Dan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Was Dan that the guy Badandi. that showed uh, that showed up to that hearing in a in a patriot suit? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Right. How they yeah. just completely made a mockery of Sandy Hook truthers there, and of course we were attacked at that time for being critical of uh, Wolfgang Halbig who many people also think is another, um, you know, paid dis disinformant or whatever. I'm not going to go there. Right. Um, but, I mean, this is how, this is the struggles that we run into when we're trying to get this information across, and we've got these channels that are supposed to be re representing us. It's like in Canada, we're supposed to be represented by Dan Dix, for instance, right? Mm -hmm. Where the hell was he during the Moncton uh, hoax? You know, he was yes, there. He man. was there. He did that uh, interview in the parking lot with the Satanists. Yeah, exactly. I mean, instead of instead of ripping into the whole story, instead of grilling the RCMP, he's basically you know uh, going up to them and, and shining their shoes. Yeah. And uh, you know, exactly. like, that's that's not going to get it. That's not going to defeat the new world order. That's going to help usher it in. And uh, we need to have people that we can rely on that have a set of, of balls, <laughs> you know, that can get out there and, and really do something. And we're constantly being, like, if, if people fall into the fold, where all they're doing is following, um, say, you know, InfoWars and Mark Dice and, and We Are Change, they are missing out on a huge amount of information about what is really going on with real stories that are happening right in your own country, often in your own city, right? Like the false flags that we've been covering over and over again, which InfoWars and Paul Joseph Watson and Mark Dice either ridicule us or completely ignore it or pretend it doesn't exist. You know? And no, we could have no, no, all they want to acknowledge is 9-11 and Bilderbergs. Whoa, big whoop de fucking do. We know that's a... F we know. Thank you. Thank you for enlightening us. You know, thank you so for... The chat room is asking about Dabu... And Ferguson, <laughs> and uh, uh, I'm not sure what they're. Do you know what they're asking about Dabu? Because I know he said he got his uh, hard drive fried. Uh, um, they're just saying talk about him, but um, well, yeah, yes, no specifics on that. But yeah, he did recently. He you know put up his videos saying he um he had his uh, CPU fried and his videos on his hard drive removed, not not his YouTube channel. And, you, you know, anybody that wants to, to go and, and expose somebody for putting out misinformation, go right ahead. Um, I make it, you know, I try to work with people, so I see the good stuff that Dabu does, and I see some of the bad stuff that he does, and, and uh, I think he, he's got some lessons to learn sort of thing, but I'm not going to use this podcast to denigrate his work or anything like that because he works hard. He's just a, a small guy out there, you know, and it, it's, you know, we need people like him. At least, at the very least, Dabu gets a lot of information across and people just have to be able to use their own sort of judgment mm -hmm. on whether it is... Exactly. I think what's even so more important than people than to use their own judgment? <laughs> Pardon me? I said, can we rely on the people to use their own judgment? Well, they, that's we can only rely on ourselves, really, yeah, to yeah. use our own judgment. You know, I don't even. I, mean, trust, my, I don't even trust myself anymore. <laughs> oh, come on! That's RPR. it. One hundred percent busted. <laughs> close. RPR busted. He's I'm close. Out. He's I'm close. All right, Jeff, you handle the show. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> so that was RPR. <laughs> now um, we move on. No, 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 I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm back. I'm back. We we work with we work with uh, all kinds of people and and some of the stuff that uh, you know we want to get along. We're trying to build bridges with people and and all that. So you know, yes, I know some people are gonna have a lot of questions about Dabu and some of the stuff that he puts up, but you know. That's that's for you. You want to take that on. You want to expose that. Go right ahead. You want to be critical on his videos. You want to make your own videos uh, criticizing certain YouTubers. Go right ahead because, you know, it's only a benefit if we're getting more information out there. It's only a benefit if more people are are, are being, uh, you know, cautious with the information they come across and uh, that people are being held accountable for misinformation that they put out there. As I said before earlier in the podcast here. 
I take down my videos if I make a mistake, all right? If you find a video of mine that has mistakes in it, I'll take it down, you know? And uh, I've taken down I probably three dozen by now. So I, I, I hope people remember that when they follow my channel, that uh, I'm not here to disinform you. And other people will do what other people do, and there's good things and bad things in each one of us, but uh, it's up to you as an individual to make those judgments, and, you know, that's just my take on it. Now, um... So if every, by the way, we didn't really summarize what just happened in the uh, at most people, a lot of people know by now, but the uh, the predictive programming in the Family Guy yep. was basically Wait, right. The, what are the chances it happened twice? It happened for the Boston bombing. No, and three the, times, three times. Uh, uh, so okay, Family Guy, predictive programming. Uh, first time was uh, Paul Walker's death accident. The dog, his name in the character of the show. No. Name. No, right. the first time was not that. That's the Boston bombing pre Oh, the Boston bombing was the first time. I'm sorry, yes. Yeah, yeah. so the Boston yeah. bombing a yeah. month before, I know I just did this video, was on March the 15th, which uh, the Boston bombing happened on April the 15th. It was the 15th episode of uh, The Family Guy. And in that episode, there were two references to the Boston bombing. The first uh, reference was when Peter uh, Griffin, the big fat guy with the glasses, uh, talks about how he won the Boston Marathon, and that was by driving over <laughs> all the runners right, across. And he was on with Bob Costas, of course, right, and, and talking about, how did you win? Well, uh, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and then the second uh, reference in that same uh, episode was when Peter Griffin was in a bar, and he was wearing um, some sort of, I don't know if it was a Muslim sort of, year or whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. But he was with two of his buddies, and he was talking about his friend Muhammad, I think, <laughs> I'm not sure, and how he gave him this cell phone, and his friends were saying, well, he's probably a terrorist, and he's like, no, he's not, I'll get him on the phone, and he calls, deep, 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 and then boom, then he goes, wait a second, I'll try it again, deep, 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 and then boom, again, okay? That is not a fucking coincidence. No fucking way. No, no fucking way. how. No way. Get no, the fuck out of here. You think it's a coincidence? Nah, that's part of the st stage, man. Yes, for sure. Hey, and guys. Uh, if it was in different episodes, I'd say, okay. If it's maybe. in the family, guy, it's not a coincidence. So Seth MacFarlane, now, uh, also, just to know, just I should have prefaced it with this, was Seth MacFarlane was one of the very famous people who just somehow managed to avoid dying on 9-11. He, 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 his agent, his agent got the time wrong. He set it half an hour late sort of thing, right? It was supposed to, he was supposed to be at the airport at 7.45. His agent told him 8.15. But no, no I, thought he was, I thought he was drunk, Jeff. Did yes, yes, yes you let, let me finish. <laughs> In the same article, he talks, he's being interviewed, and this is Seth MacFarlane himself, and he's saying, well... Thank God I got wasted. You know, it was a good thing about alcohol because I ended up sleeping in and, and coming late to my flight. So they, they actually even contradict their own story in, in the freaking same newspaper, the same article. They, they completely contradict it. And, of course, the average person is so asleep that they can't pick out these things and say, well, wait a second. He just, they just told us that it was the agent's fault. Now he's telling us that he got wasted and ended up sleeping in and missing the flight. And uh, so he misses that flight well, along with a lot of very famous people who should have been on those flights, go figure, right? And then he becomes sort of uh, a spokesman for, oh, my God, you know, I could have been on that plane. And then you're on all the interviews, and guess what? You have the top show, and then you get another show, and you get movies, and you get everything else, and you're in the club, right? Um, and then when I, I mentioned before on, on the uh, – March the 15th. He has another show, of course, called the American Dad, which is about a CIA <laughs> agent, right? An all-American with a great big chin. And uh, another cartoon, of course. And what happened was on April the 15th, no, April, yes, it was the day before. It was April the 14th, the day before. It was the 15th episode of that show. Um, the character, I believe his name is Snot, was talking to the girl he took out on a date, and the girl said, you know, I didn't really think I would have a great time, but I had a blast. And, and then, then the snot character goes, you had a blast. Call the bomb. Well, that makes two blasts. Call the bomb squad. Next day, two blasts. There's no fucking way that's a coincidence. No way, no how. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Forget about it. Black so magic. the latest one, of course, being 
Robin Williams, uh, and I might even be forgetting one in there, and there's probably many more that we haven't even put together yet, but, but Robin Williams... The, but this is the most blatant. Go ahead. Yeah, Robin even, Williams... Even the official story about how he killed himself, like he was hacking away at himself with a pen knife? What? Is, is that what they're saying now? Yeah, yeah. Uh, they, like, he was hacking away. He tried futilely futile, futile hacking away at his wrist. I thought he asphyxiated himself with a belt. That's what I had heard. Uh, Apparently now he slid his wrists and asphyxiated himself. That's right, that's right. He started doing that. It wasn't very good. It didn't work out. I mean... No, it's basically... Where's the gun? (laughs) You know, if he really wants to waste himself. Exactly. You're talking about this super wealthy guy. He's probably worth hundreds hundreds of millions, I would uh, estimate, uh, with the success and and the draw that he had in in the pictures for so long. And he doesn't have a gun. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't have a, a medicine cabinet that's full of anything that he, he wants. He doesn't have an effective means of, of, you know, making sure. Exactly, exactly. So, the, the, to, to get to the, the I just want to finish off for our listeners, the family guy. So what happened was the BBC was airing the episode of what I mentioned before. I think I mentioned it in the opening segment where um, Peter Griffin made some sort of wish and ended up you know being struck by lightning and then everything he touched turned into Robin Williams so the character mm-hmm. Peter Griffin's at the end of the episode tries to kill himself right and he, guess what how did he kill himself he cut off his hands or oh, that was one of the things that he did apparently I haven't seen the episode but apparently he tries to kill himself and he cuts off his hands and right as the, the, the episode, I think the credits are rolling, the news comes across the ticker wire on the BBC that Robin right. killed himself. Yeah, really. And, uh, we're supposed to believe that that's just a coincidence once again. I don't, I don't know, but we're all yeah. lunatics for pointing all of this out and delving into <laughs> this and exposing this information. He, 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 fuck probably, off. he probably saw himself depicted no. on Family Guy and okay. couldn't take watching it, so had to kill himself. Had to kill himself. <laughs> Shit, right after, yeah. <laughs> Hey Brutal. guys, uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm a little upset, uh, but um, I'd like to also point something out to uh, everyone that I found, and it's another possibly bombshell. Is uh, Robin Williams predicted programming again here uh, in a movie, his recent movie called The Angriest Man in Brooklyn. Now, now, uh, spoiler alert! A spoiler alert if you guys care about it. But at the end. He dies. He he's from a he has a brain aneurysm, and as he's dying on his deathbed, he says his years. Uh, he says this his years that he was born to his death. He says uh, 19 whatever to 2014, and so uh, <laughs> his character. That's exactly said, how they do it every yeah, single his time. His character said his his those his years of existence yep. as he was dying. And we could talk a- about Whitney Houston or Michael Jackson or even more recently one that I covered, which was Philip Seymour Hoffman, which had so many goddamn coincidences it would make your head spin, right? Yep. And, uh, you know, uh, of course, I make a video like that. People do call me crazy for, for even getting into that. It's not really my field to get into, but my word, you cannot deny all the coincidences. In fact, with Philip Seymour Hoffman, he starred in a film that said, I think, better than... Is it better than the devil knows you're dead or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah, the devil knows you're dead, yes. Before the devil knows you're dead or something like that, right? Yeah. Where they're trying to cheat fate. And he actually dies in the film um, with an overdose. He he dies with a needle in his arm with the, um, what you might call it, still tied onto him. Um, and that's exactly how they found him dead in real life with 65 bags of heroin, right? It's just insane. Enough for, you know, a whole city block, basically, right? I don't know what the guy was planning to do. Never leave his apartment again. I don't know. But all the things with that killing also uh, linked up with the Super Bowl, the numbers, everything. So people want to look into that one as well. It's another one of those coded things. And I don't know why they do these things. Obviously, it's some form of black magic, right? There, There is something that they get out of these things. There is some sort of power that they're able, maybe it's spiritual, right? This is going into the realm of, of, of people that we know that really know this stuff a lot better than me, maybe round Saturn's eye or... Uh, you know, Casey from Enter the Stars, people like that, right, would, would really know this stuff a lot better. Or Red Pill, for instance, and, and Police State, right? These things, they use these things for some sort of ritual for some, and they always match up with dates. They always, locations, everything matches up. 
and uh, you know, you can't deny it. Once you dig into it and you start seeing it, you just your head will spin when you see how these celebrities are off. And they're always off when you don't. I mean, they're, how many of these big time celebrities are dying of of old age? <laughs> yeah, this doesn't really happen very often, right? I think they're lucky if they get there. But uh, no, we're all look. They just look more and more alien. <laughs> they go into like the shit, they, like when you look at Cher right now, like I mean, wow. Now, I do. I do want to mention uh, Kate Slate Eleven. Kate Slate. She's moderating moderating the chat room, and also Chrissy Tokyo is with us, and she is in there as well. And I just wanted to hear Kate Slate's voice. You know, and Chrissy, <laughs> please. I just, Hi. <laughs> how's Hi, everyone Chrissy. doing? Hey, everybody. Hey. Hi, Kate. Kate. Kate Slade, are you having fun? Come on, we need to hear your voice for a second. Oh, yeah, it's been a blast. The, the comments are coming. You guys are getting a good crew. You guys are doing a good job. But the, the chat room is saying that they'd like to talk about Ferguson a little bit because I guess there's big riots going on right now. That's right, the Missouri uh, shooting. Yeah, and the Missouri shooting right. about a 17-year-old. Right, right. I haven't even followed it. I don't know anything about it. Can somebody... Um, Yes, I've been consumed by, uh, you know. It's yeah, I've been. Do you want me to explain it to you real quick? Yes, please. please, please. Summary, um, essentially, this uh, 17 year old, he was, uh, I'm not exactly sure, exactly, like I said, this is a rough summary. He was just out, and either A, he was trying to wrestle with a cop to get his gun, is one story. Another story is he was shoplifting. Anyway, so the cop shot him. He was unarmed completely. And now, you know, um,. They're having riots and et cetera because they won't release the police officer's name. Um, Where is this? And it, was it a racial thing? Yeah, it, it's a it's turning into a racial thing. Yeah, it's a white, yeah. Black, black, black seventeen year old. Can anyone post the link in the in the links here so I can I can take a quick look because I haven't heard anything about it and and. Uh, yeah, someone wants know. to post the link. But there was an also another killing just recently where a black man was strangled to death, if I'm not mistaken, by a cop. Yeah, well, like he, a he, was, he had the chokehold. The, the cop used the chokehold on that guy, and then a week later we've got this going down, and it was just a recent high school graduate. They're walking down the street. You know, the cops have their story. These guys have their story. There's been, since the kid was killed in the middle of the street, there's been riots, looting. I mean, it's, it's on the mainstream day. media isn't covering it very much, but um, you can catch it on YouTube, definitely. Right. Well, this is this is just a, a, an ongoing trend, is it not? I mean, uh, the police oh, every week. Yeah, every week. I mean, it seems like they are conditioning the police to be this way. Obviously, if we talk about whatever their end games might be, and of course we've been touching and, and going on Ebola and outbreaks and all this, and it's possible that the latest uh, outbreak here with Ebola is something to prepare for a greater outbreak maybe a few years down the road when they're really ready to bring out those vaccinations or they're going to go through with it now, but I won't get uh, sidetracked with that. But the thing is that the police are, um, they seem to really want to hire the worst type of people. There was a police officer who spoke on RT. He was a, a police, former commissioner, I believe. And he, he was talking about, they were they were asking him about the, the police need to be more of course, armed. Of course, and all of course that, right? they, they, they recruit in trailer parks. The people that are really poor have always been poor or powerless, and they give them all these toys. And all these symbols yeah. of power. Well, so they, it just goes right to their head. They go from one thing to the other. And these, right. are, these and are not very smart people. Um, yeah. You know, if they if they got better than a C average grade in high school, they would have gone on to college and become a professional and did something else. These yeah. are these are people who who graduated high school and became what cops. I, uh, what I wanted to say was about this police officer. I'll try to find the link for it so people can check it out. But there was a, a police commissioner, a guy who retired, and they were asking him on, on Russia Today about the, do police need to be more heavily armed at all this. And he said it's the worst possible thing that you could ever do. He says one out of four to two out of four police officers are not good people. He says, and he came out and laid it out straight, and this is what I've always known. <laughs> Believe me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Here, here's another big, uh, here's a big issue with the Ferguson riots. As I've been kind, I haven't been looking at it uh, as as much as I would have liked to, um, but what I'm seeing here. 
there is a lot of uh, racial tension in this one, uh, and I can see where it's coming from. Uh, it may not necessarily, if this was in a different place, it wouldn't necessarily have to be a black and white thing. But Ferguson apparently is majority; it's it's a uh, black neighborhoods, mm -hmm. and most of the cops, most of the cops management, um, they're all white, um, and it's not so much the race that I see. Sorry, I had a bus go by on me. Um, it's not so much the race that I see, but the fact that these cops, no, nobody knows who these people are. So they're getting, um, uh, there's no more real face. Like, they don't, they don't have kids that play soccer or baseball with their kids. You know what I mean? Like, the, there's no recognition uh, well, we're seeing of the community right across, uh, as, as it is felt. We're seeing right across the board now. I know this covering the Moncton uh, false flag, which I firmly believe is a false flag, and the, the propaganda is still going big time with that event, but my word, the propaganda that came out after that event, right as that event was happening, when they were, they had to chase this guy down the giant uh, pyramid <laughs> that they yeah. mapped out for the search area, and they had deputy commissioners from the RCMP, which is the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, for American listeners, which is kind of a national, almost like FBI slash police force, be nice, of Canada, and um, they they had deputy commissioners coming on saying, you know, it's tough. We we don't have the the firepower. We don't have the equipment to be able. And you're talking about a town, Moncton, about 140,000 people that sees maybe one shooting every three or four years. <laughs> mm -hmm. And they went in that thing with tanks, hundreds of those armored vehicles that uh, you know had missed a turrets on them, had gun yeah. turrets on them, terrorizing the people of that city. Um, Brinks trucks. Brinks trucks, you name it, right? And uh, you know, officers standing at intersections with their guns drawn you know, uh, held in a ready position sort of thing, terrorizing the neighborhood over mm -hmm. this whole thing. And all the talk coming off the corporate media is how we need to be able to, to, to deal with these situations because they're going to yeah, happen yeah, in your that's neighborhood. It, that's it. And, and, and the big, big uh, guilt-tripping, tear-jerking, pat your local RCMP on the back. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was just about to say, Jeff, shouldn't you be focusing more on, you know, how sad it was to see that police dog at the funeral? You know, isn't yeah. that really what you're supposed to be watching? <laughs> My word, the propaganda that they put out, and a lot of it came directly from the RCMP, of course. Yeah, if yeah, you know anything about New Brunswick, New Brunswick is, is a monarchy. It's run by the Irving Oil family. They control it all. Anybody in the media is controlled by the Irvings. Anybody in the RCMP is controlled by the Irvings. They control it all. So whatever happens there, nothing goes by without them being involved. And we're talking billionaire oil barons, right, who have a, a stranglehold on a very small province in Canada. And uh, But the, these patterns are right across the board. I mean, we talked about the, is it high River there in Calgary, where the RCMP went in and started disarming uh, citizens, uh, taking their guns after people yeah, had yeah. been flooded out of their homes, basically, and they were bashing into people's yeah. homes and stealing their weapons. Even if they were locked up, they were smashing the locks, taking them. Now a lot of people never got those weapons back, right? Yeah. A lot of them were 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 handed on, were were inherited, sort of thing. So yeah, they don't absolutely have absolutely disgusting. Yeah, yeah. So all this stuff is going on. We see it right across the United States where this police state, I mean, you cannot mistake it. Aaron calls them all the time the black sun, you know, like police, right? Black sun police, yeah. The uniforms get darker, the armor. I mean, in Montreal, every police officer wears armor. And to yeah, me, that's that's right. the craziest thing. It's like uh, I've known yeah, police yeah. officers. I knew a police officer worked 35 years on the, the main beat right downtown, and yeah, he refused he to wear his gun once. And yet, every single stinking officer on the force is wearing body armor everywhere yeah. they go. That's yeah. like you know? the riots right now. They're bringing in um, heavy military vehicles. I think there's pictures of tanks. I'm not sure if it's tanks or if it's like heavy uh, Humvees. They're bringing all sorts of stuff in. This, this could be a giant psyop as well. I mean, it could be that the, a lot of the, the damage and rioting that's happening is instigated. And we saw this in Moncton, for instance, with um, the riots that uh, – they weren't even riots. The people, the the uh, Elsie Booktog that were protesting – the fracking, which is one of the most destructive forces and uh, one of the most environmentally damaging things that you could possibly do to any sort of natural ecosystem. And so the naturally, the native people of New Brunswick stood up and wanted and 
you know, peacefully tried to protest against it, guess what? The RCMP started blowing up their own police cars, turning them on fire. Exactly what they did at the G20 summit, which was caught on video, how they, they had uh, guys that were dressed up as protesters but were wearing police boots. Yeah. And that they were the ones that were burning the cop cars and, and causing all this destruction. Of course, the corporate media and the pundits in the, yeah. the, the you know the newspapers are all ripping into everybody. So they went with the black block. Exactly. Yeah, and and the same thing. I, I, it, it's happening in Ferguson right now. Um, you're seeing pictures of uh, cop cars that are flipped over, beaten in the front. Um, you're seeing people that are going in through, uh, uh, like, you know, camera stores over this guy being shot. And, I mean, like, if, like I don't know what's really going on there. I haven't, I have not spent enough time, but I have seen what, what has been happening. Um, but, man, uh, just, just for the people that are listening that, that might be around and it, whatever, like, I think it's the most important. Like, we got to stay cool on this and not... If if this isn't if this is uh, from uh, uh, agent provocateur, um, mm -hmm. it 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 must whatever it is from. Please just make sure that you don't get carried away with someone else doing something that's uh, destructive to your own community, and it's making your side look bad. Um, so I, think, I mean, I think you're very good at, at playing these things. I think you, you know, go back to the Rodney King riots. I think a lot. I think it's all instigated. I think they know exactly what they're doing and how what what the cause and reaction is going to be. And I think they probably even throw. Uh, you know, it's very easy to start a riot if if you just you know you stoke the fire enough, right? If you if you put the right people in the right places and and you know get get people so revved up. And it's very easy to get the black community revved up because they're constantly victims of racism. You should see it here in my city of Montreal. It's unfucking believable the racism that the police unleash upon blacks here. Constantly getting beaten, killed, things yeah. like that, right? Uh, don't get me started on Montreal, Jeff. Exactly. So, um, and I could say uh, the, the another example I was just thinking of. I just had at the top of my head something that happened not too long ago as well, where it just a lot of this seems, as you say, you know, agent provocateurs, things that they put in in order to stoke the situation, and it works well. I think the whole, um, you know, uh, for me, the whole uh, Trayvon Martin thing and uh, that Zimmerman thing was was a whole psyop on on the American people. It reminded right. me. Of lot of, of O.J. Simpson, like a whole summer-long thing where everybody was divided, where you have the creatures in the corporate media like Nancy Grace. I don't even, I mean, if anybody's a lizard person. <laughs> oh, man. I hate her. I hate her. But I, I think that a lot of this stuff is, is purposely orchestrated, uh, and, um, you know, it's very easy now with the way that they've got the cops uh you know, a full-on, full force, a lot of psychopaths in the cops. That's where it's a, it's a, it's an area that they gravitate towards because being a police officer gives you power, and uh, you know, it could just be power over another individual, and uh, that's. Well, and I think this is partly manufactured, but I think you're also going to see this blow up to be even bigger than Trayvon because, you know, the cop shot him eight times. Mm -hmm. It's just yeah, going to be. Huge, you know. I think it's a little bigger. If you sorry to cut you off there, but if you look, turn on CNN right now, there's basically like a huge standoff between riot police and protesters. Mm -hmm. And it's like it's perfect. I mean, you've got yeah. the 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 all the illegals crossing the borders. You got everybody divided and conquered. <laughs> Everybody's exactly. focused, and uh, every, and everyone's distracted from from what's going on in Iraq exactly. and the Middle East and I mean, uh, Ukraine and MH17. Robin, Robin Williams and on and on. <laughs> exactly. I mean, all these things are wonderful distractions. We had the uh, Justin Bryant, our Ottawa expositor here, was one of the few people in Canada to actually turn up at the TPP, <laughs> you know, nice. secretive meeting that they switched at the last minute to Ottawa. Did any other Canadians? I mean, how many Canadians actually heard that that was going on? Maybe how, uh, how many even know what the TTP is? Exactly. Right. Yeah, the there's. Uh, it was, if you're listening, <laughs> not uh, the political pork. <laughs> these guys, these guys were just strolling in and out of that building, man. And I mean, like, there was only so much that one person can do. They were hidden behind like security and whatnot on private property, um, but they would go out for their strolls, like in the evening. You know, they were walking around two blocks away from my fucking country's capital and two blocks away from the fucking 
CBC building on Sparks uh, Sparks Road in uh, Ottawa or Sparks Spark Street, sorry, and nobody says a thing. You know, like these guys are just like they didn't even know where they were going until they were told. Yeah, well, uh, CBC until you're actually going there. CBC is state media. It's they're calling the shots. They're funding it. No doubt. No, no doubt. Betcha. You know, um, you betcha. If, if CNN starts covering this heavily, then you really know the fix is on. So, um, you know, like these things, they're going to flare up. I mean, and, and, and we could look at it cause and effect. We could say, well, one of the causes, of course, there's so many psychopaths that are being recruited, sociopaths and psychopaths, into the police force. This is what the commissioner of a former, you know, head of, of, a, of a major city, I think it was Chicago, came out and said. He said, you know what, one out of four... Maybe even more than one out of four is a crazy guy, is a psychopath, well, and they want think, to use that power to hurt people. Yeah, think know? about it, Jeff. I mean, think about it. If you're a sociopath, literally somebody who's born without a conscience, um, and and you live in a place like Canada where you have access to guns, but but not really. You still have to, you know, get a license, and you know, you definitely can't have a handgun for for self-defense purposes. But hey, if you become a cop, you get a gun. And you can exactly. use it. <laughs> yeah. Gun and a, a copper, you know, badge, and and hey, you're out there, and and you've got yeah. power over. Me. I have a license to kill, and they're going to protect right. me if I do. Exactly, you have a union that will protect I'll never, you. I'll yeah. never spend a day in jail. You yeah, know? you got a free ticket in the mafia. Yeah, and there's yeah, barely right, in, a soul right. in Canada that and really knows how to exert their rights. You know, like they they don't understand yeah. the question. Uh, and, and the importance of am I free or am I, am I detained or am I free to go? And yeah. uh, Red Pill, you would get a kick out of this. Um, so I'm in Toronto, and right outside of Toronto Police Headquarters, and I mean the main headquarters downtown. The Masonic it? Headquarters, you mean? The, the Masonic Headquarters, there is an obelisk, okay? <laughs> on the, they're building it. An obelisk? It's, no, it's like a miniature. I'll, I'll send you guys a picture. It's a miniature obelisk on the back of a cart with somebody pulling the cart, and on the obelisk it says to serve and protect. And I just find that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, oh, wow. I mean, obelisk, it all, man. Ob obelisks, yes, obviously are just giant penises. Yeah, so, that's what they're. Uh, they're all over the world. You have erections. All around you, everywhere. Oh man, um, key ley lines and yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, pl they plug into the acupuncture of the planet. Did you guys notice the obelisk, uh, phallic, um, uh, building uh, in the show featured in the show Twenty Four? Uh, obviously, that's that uh, building in London. I forgot what it was called, the Gherkin Building. Yeah, yeah. That's another. That's another one. You ever but, seen uh, the headquarters of MI Six? It's 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 a Sumerian temple. <laughs> Shit, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you saw it in uh, Skyfall, uh, James. Yeah, they blew it's it up. It's a ziggurat. It's a ziggurat. Thank you, exactly yeah. it. The Sumerian temple. It's a ziggurat. Um, that's how creepy these people are running yeah, these yeah. institutions, and oh, they yeah. hire purposely. Now there was undercover uh, investigators. I remember seeing this years ago that went into the British police force. And uh, they were reporters. I don't know who they work for. Br Britain has like ten major media outlets uh, beyond the BBC, sort of thing. So they work for one of these media outlets, and they spent months going through the recruitment, the training of becoming a British police officer. And it was absolutely they brought in, uh, you know, um, hidden cameras and stuff, right? And it was so shocking because the other the guy. What happened is, of course, the bad seeds quickly take over. The groups, right? Uh, the, the the guys that come in and and guess what they're doing? They're going out. And they're getting loaded. and They're talking about how they're going to smash in the heads of Asians, and and that they're all going to do it, and that they each have to do it to kind of prove themselves. You have to go out and kill an Asian, basically, uh, one night. <laughs> just get them when they're out, you know, on the street. Take them to a dark place, uh, an alley, and just smash their skull in. And uh, <laughs> I mean, these are the people that you're you're putting police. Your 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 own people. Uh, that's not by accident. Yeah right. So uh, it's another interesting story, and I think uh, I think that maybe this story does have a lot of uh, legitimacy to it. Just looking at the photos and stuff that I've seen. 
Um, it'll be interesting to see which way the corporate media plays it. If the corporate media, by and large, ignores it, then it's probably 100% real. <laughs> That's kind of the way that uh, this stuff works. But if they start using it all the time, and you have Nancy Grace showing up, well, then you you know the fix is probably on, and somehow it's been orchestrated. So. Yeah, and then there's so much going on right now. It's uh, again, we're at one of those uh, over overwhelming points right now. There's uh, yeah, peaking points. Many thing, many different psyops and uh, things going on right now. So we're 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 being bombarded. It's overwhelming right now, right? As we, I was telling that Jeff, it's hard to cover all of this stuff, and and now this Robin Williams thing, and the and this bombshell, and and trying now trying to expose these people, trying to. Uh, lead people astray on that, and so we have all this right. going on. So it's hard to. Um, we've got we've got so much going on now. Yeah, and we can't. That, that's what the most. Im- yeah, and that, but that's what's the most important thing to Mark Dice. You know, when you have all this stuff going on, it's you know how the craziest people you can find on YouTube are talking about uh, the Illuminati, uh, like the worst messages you could find on what the Illuminati uh, it could possibly be doing about Robin Williams. Like, we're taking them as the authority. Like, and, and this is basically, and I've seen the, the comments, too. It does affect people. It really does. I've seen people on um, uh, many different channels where they're saying, oh, you are exactly that channel that Mark Dice warned me about. And I'm just like, <laughs> oh, you're oh. that channel that thinks, that talks about hoaxes. Oh, my God, stay away. Right? Yeah. Yeah, well, this this is the undro- indoctrination of of the likes of Mark Dice, and and you know, if you go on uh, Infowars, Mark Dice, and you type in, you say hey, this was a hoax, that was a hoax, Andy Hook was a hoax. They're they're gonna be like, what are you talking about? <laughs> because they don't know. See, that's the indoctrination there. Yeah, it's it's yeah. it's really sad and uh, but true, and that, that's something like. I mean, I, I don't go on Infowars. I rarely watch Infowars. Sometimes uh, I, I dive into that uh, abyss. Sometimes. Yeah, and if you dive into it, then you realize that you know how they gatekeep people and they keep them away from from a lot of the information that we're uncovering. And that's one of the. I mean, for me, I think if 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 like people, we have a lot of uh, crossover listeners. So people like Red Pill, myself, uh, 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 you know, Aaron, will have people that will listen to us and also be subscribed and listen to Alex Jones so we have to sometimes be a little bit careful because we don't want to insult our listeners and make them think that we we're gonna think for them kind of thing right and tell them who to follow and who who not to follow yeah, right, but so. I, I think that nonetheless there, there's some really disturbing things that come out of, of Infowars and I think one of the no. most disturbing things for us uh, something that uh, I've really, you know, kind of my bread and butter uh, doing what I do is all the false flags that they failed <laughs> completely to expose, which would have surely, at the very minimum, exposed the corporate media, which would have torn down that veneer, right, that uh, veil that they've got that, that uh, you know, just keeps the sheeple as stupid as possible. But, but they yet, were in no show. No. Yeah. yeah, there are no show, no or they show up for a few days, and then it's done. I mean, I remember Rob Dew did some great work on Boston for about three or four days, and then, oh, you're Rob, we're moving you over. You're going to cover this now. Why? <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's it, right? And then, of course, we know that the people that end up leaving um, Infowars talk about the secrecy, the level of secrecy that is involved in that operation, which yeah, is definitely. absolutely... <laughs> it's beyond, well beyond the corporate media, the non-disclosure agreements that people have to sign. And then you can also go into the connections to Strat4, of course, which I've gotten into videos, the, the Ashkenazi uh, Jews that uh, provide most of the funding for Infowars through all the products that they sell on the... I mean, there's a lot of different things that people can dig into and question about Infowars, and uh, it's it's something. I mean, there's there's where there's smoke, there's probably fire. I'm not saying Infowars is, is 100%. I'm saying there's there's good stuff that you'll find there. There are good there are good people in Infowars, but the whole thing is totally compromised right from the get go. Yeah. yeah. And, well, just the well, it's just, it, it's, a, it's actually I23. I23. Can you explain that, Aaron? <laughs> Info Wars. Oh, is that the... Is that... Sorry. It, I didn't... Anyway, it doesn't matter. Like it, It's like uh, Lennon said, uh, we, we, the best opposition is the one we own, right? Yeah, 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 so yeah exactly. They, they have to start it off right from the beginning. When they did 
they had a whole conspiracy movement ready to go. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. That's uh, what people uh, also fail to uh, think about and consider. And I think that's a definitely, um, definitely would uh, probably agree with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, yeah, because right away they had all these occult symbols, the doves, you know, the investigate 9-11, it was like you saw all these doves and all these occult symbols, and it was just the same shit. Right, right. And yeah. you see all of these people kind of interconnected, and, uh, you know, you go you go with that whole group, uh, uh, you know, InfoWars, Mark Dice, We Are Change. They've been around for a long time, right, from the old days, and uh, covering the 9-11, uh, and, you know, of course, Alex Jones. And, you know, that's a strong, I mean, that's a strong possibility there. I mean, when you think about it, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So you think, oh, you yeah. think they were and, you think and, they were controlled off from the beginning? Yeah, well, in light of the way it turned out, you know, it just seems to stink to high, high to heaven or something. Yeah, it's you hard to you believe. Don't, you, don't, you don't think that they were turned at some point? No, the enemy, the enemy had the whole playing field mapped out for us, like what the war we're gonna fight and how we're gonna fight it. I don't yeah, know. Like, I think what 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 a lot of people would criticize about Infowars is the fact that they don't cover the whole Jewish angle, right? To this, yeah, yeah, yeah they don't really, angle. or the Jesuit angle, or any yeah, other. Yeah, 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 really exactly. So, uh, right, and right, Infowars, yeah, as, as we pointed out, they do not cover the false. They don't, flag, they don't so. talk about religion. Everything stops at the banks. No, 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 the no, 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 Aaron. It's the, glo- the it's the religions. <laughs> it's the globalists. Yeah, yeah. Global, it's the global. That's as far as we're gonna go, okay? That's a global. And it, it could be, it could be one of those things where, <laughs> it could be one of those things where, uh, you know, that they're, they're only allowed to cover certain things, and they can cover those things all they want, but they can't touch these other things, right? And that could be what the deal that they've made dealing with, say, the false flags and the gun grab and everything that's going on because they don't cover all those things. And you wonder, it's like, what the hell? Look at all this work. Look at all the work that we've done in covering these false flags. Why doesn't InfoWars pick up on it? Why didn't they? Well, and look how much information they put out, too. I mean, if you go look at one of the the, the three-hour sessions, I mean, it is chalk block full of headlines. You know what Mm -hmm. I mean? Like, there, there is no reason why some of these should not be putting up there unless there is an actual reason for why they're not putting it up there. I yeah, mean, yeah. That, exactly. Like, I, I, and once again, and I think you bring up a good point, Jeff. I'm not trying to bash in full words. There's a lot of stuff that they uh, have, they've woken, uh, they've, they've made a yep. lot of people wake up. Yeah. But in the long run, uh, to, to, your, to any listeners that, that also follow this, just bear in mind, Take one hour of the headlines that they throw at you. Um, remember what they say about it and fact check it. Now, everybody is going to have one or two things that they talk about that they are not fully informed on. I mean, that's just how people are, and and you know that's that's how it works. It's okay, but when you you just have to see the vast number of things that they talk about and um, the vast number of those that actually, when you fact check them, they come up with. It's just them talking about it, and you don't know where they're coming from. They usually source like Reuters and AP, and well, you know, like whatever, like you know, it's yeah, yeah. Just it's always brutal. it's always puzzling to me when you get these 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 media types in the alternative media who selectively choose stories. So like all of a sudden, Reuters is a legitimate source, even though Reuters bullshits about this and bullshits about that and Building Seven or whatever else, right? <laughs> now we're doing this article, and Reuters put out an article that we can use, so Reuters is good. And then next day, yeah. Reuters is bad. You know, and it, 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 that all those kind of things really bother me because I think, you know, yes, the, even the corporate media will put out real stories. Not everybody that's working as reporters or working as as columnists are in on the whole big thing. They're just you know, they're told what they can do, and then they're told what they can avoid. We've got a perfect example here in Canada where we have basically three corporations that control all our media, and you'd be hard-pressed to see anything that is uh, anti-Israel <laughs> coming out of yeah, anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're automatically knee-jerk. Yeah, it's just natural to support Israel. No, if anything, you're going to advertise your, uh, you to support Israel, exactly. You will lose your job. Yeah, and then you have things... Shit. 
Yeah, and then you look at things like 22 minutes. Um, that This Hour's 22 Minutes is a show in Canada that's a lot like Jon Stewart and uh, Stephen Colbert. It's like minutes. a panel news group. It's a satirical thing where they're making fun yeah, yeah, of that, politicians. Yeah, that's the Hebrew alphabet. Yeah, 22. <laughs> right, so here's the thing. Like, they'll, they'll bash, like, the current leading politician. Or, you know, that it's a comedy thing. They'll, they'll make fun of it. And they will, they will really, they have the ability to ruin a politician's career. I've seen it with Stockwell Day and the uh, petition to change his name to Doris Day. They, they completely Doris? ruined his... Do yeah, yeah. So Stockwell Day's plan was, if you had a petition with 100,000 votes and you sent that to, par uh, or 100,000 signatures, and you sent that to Parliament, that would have to be brought up in question period and voted on, okay? Wow. So, he actually did something Rick, good. <laughs> so Rick Mercer awesome. from 22 Minutes takes that, and he says, well, I'm going to start a petition. Let's change Stockwell Day's name to Doris Day, and he got over 2 million signatures online. Wow. You know, and Canada and only has about 30 million people. <laughs> Canadians yeah. are asleep beyond anyone else on this planet. I mean, but we know this the hard right. way, right? I mean, it, 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 it's right. like and, and, your sorry, head up against the wall. Yeah, and, and for sure. Ahead, and, but here's the thing. I, I apologize. I didn't mean to cut you off there. But this is as no, far no. as they're going to go. They're going to try and change Stockwell Day's name. It was funny, and it was you know a good point that they, you can really do anything, but... This is as far as they go. You don't hear anything about the, the secret meetings uh, of the Ch uh, Canadian Council of Chief Executives with Stephen Harper. You don't hear about these things being talking about because, you know, I, I'm sure you can make comedy out of it. Jeff, I've seen you make comedy out of this kind of stuff. It's not yeah. that hard. You, you know what I mean? It is pretty jokeable. At the, at, you know what I mean? It, it's, but they don't it talk is, about it. And this is our alternative. You talk about uh, the, the Canadian Council of Chief Executives, which is the Canadian equivalent of the Bilderberg Group, which are the top 150 corporations in Canada. that are headquartered in Canada, but they are multinational corporations, meaning that they don't have any borders, meaning that they have offices around the world, meaning that they are world powers, and they do not like national sovereignty. They freaking hate it. They want to carve up North America like a pie. Right, and just have it all, all, all these different boroughs, basically, of, of uh, you know, the North American Union. And uh, they have rewritten all the business rules in Canada in order to suit their needs, right, in order to consolidate their power. And their power is so massive that they get to meet with the, the Prime Minister of Canada two to three times a month. That's 24 to 30 times a year. And uh, the joke that I would make about that is that, uh, uh, what's his name there, um, David Suzuki, <laughs> from the nature of things, has been trying to see the prime minister for a decade. <laughs> he can't get in, of course, right? Because he's he's like a tree hugger, right? So uh, right. that is the reality of of what runs our 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 country, and nobody knows about this. I mean, beyond me and you, and and few people that listen to us, and maybe a few in, well informed Canadians who are not reading the National Post, the Grope and Fail. Um, the McLean's uh, tabloid, right? If you're not, you know, it's it's amazing how Canadians are so easily controlled and how out to lunch they have no idea what is really going on. They have no idea what the real power structure is that runs our, our country, and they're happy that way because they've got Tim Hortons on every corner and uh, they're going to go eat their donuts, their GMO frickin' crap. <laughs> right. Listen, listen, man. All you have to do is look as far as as some of the logos. Look at the Rogers logo. It's like the Chase Manhattan Bank logo. Look at the bank logos. Those are really telling. If you go look at Scotia Bank, it's it's basically a globe wrapped in a big S, as if some something's got a hold of the of the globe. RBC, same thing. Globe with a lion's paw on it. Like, yeah. uh, come on. Yeah, the, it it really has shifted in many ways. That's why I always seem to 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 go on about corporations and the power that they have more than I go on about uh, politicians and and you know celebrities and shit like that. Because really, the power does lie with the banks. It really well, does. Politicians lie. answer to the banks. Yes, they work for the banks, right? And if they're yeah. lucky and they do a good job in office, guess what? They'll have a you know a head office job after in some major city, right? And and they'll make lots of money and they'll be able to have their Freemason and Illuminati parties. Maybe, and maybe they'll be a lobbyist. <laughs> You'll be a lobbyist, or right? A John Manley, baby. 
from deputy prime minister to uh, CEO of the chief of the CEOs. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's deputy prime minister, and now he's chief executive officer of the council, Canadian Council of Chief Executives, which is a far more powerful uh, position, to be honest. And uh, the the prime minister answers to the Canadian Council of Chief Executives, not the other way around, right? That's yep. where the money lies. If the, all the massive corporations um, headquartered in Canada come into your office, they're going to be able to push you around. And, and that's why we have puppets instead of real people running our governments. And it's something that, you know, all of us know this. I mean, especially our American friends on this panel. I mean, it, 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 it's, it's a joke. The political system, forget about it. It's all about money and power and nepotism and all these things. No, that... Jeff, but if we only lobby Congress. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, Congress gives a fuck about you. I mean, <laughs> it, it's so scary. And, of course, we, we were going on before about how Ebola, of course, they could use an outbreak. And this is always, the for me, it's the scariest scenario, that they could actually fake a pandemic pandemic and be able to declare martial law and then boy oh boy next thing you know force vaccinations there yeah. you go I mean what is the end game of the new world order it's depopulation it's not even the end game but it really is the end game for us right yep. as, as uh, free citizens where our game ends yeah <laughs> um, so, hey, hey uh, uh, I'm sorry I just want yeah, to go ahead RP I, okay I just wanted to state um, just a quick kind of a seventh inning stretch message, message here. Uh, we, if you missed the first hour, we exposed Alex Jones. And, I mean, not Alex Jones, Mark Dice, and uh, and these people, uh, Paul Joseph Watson, for um, for calling us all lunatics, for pointing out the predictive programming in the latest uh, Family Guy episode uh, with Robin Williams and Suicide Connection. And uh, and so I, I just want to re reiterate the and the emphasis on that the importance of exposing them and in lying. And uh, you know, leading people astray, and so this is what we're pointing out. And moving forward, this is what we're here for, guys, to provide you this platform here, where we give you guys our real, you know, sort of perspective on things. And and uh, you know, we do things for free here. We just want the truth out. Okay, guys. So uh, I just wanted to say that. And um, uh, to so moving on though, I did want to start to talk about if that's okay, the Ebola uh, agenda, agenda 21 maps, uh, yes, you know, immigration maps, whole connection thing, and also the connection with Yellowstone. I wanted to see what Justin Bryant and uh, Police State Radio thought on that, definitely, and and uh, also free agent. Absolutely. So you want to set it up for us, uh, RPR? Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Um, okay. Uh, the first. First and foremost, the uh, Professor Doom one first came out with that video, right? Uh, comparing the immigration maps with the uh, with the CDC quarantine station maps, right? And then mm -hmm. I expanded on his video, and then he re-expanded on my video. Um, so if you haven't checked it out, go check out Professor Doom one's videos and his channel. Uh, but yeah, so there's this connection, and then people were stating and pointing out the fact that you know the empty space in the middle is quite coincidental. Uh, that it matches up with the fallout zone of Yellowstone, and I, you know, of course, considering yeah. the the uh, the Yellowstone hype this year and all the speculation, of course, it's worth mentioning, right, and pointing out there and throwing that out there. So um, there's that connection, and of course, the w without that connection in and of itself, it's already very revealing the Agenda 21, and which is very real and 100% true. And yep. the, that alone is very absolutely shocking. The, the the maps they have up, they lined up, and the website I pointed out, which was uh, twenty the twenty fifty America twenty fifty, and this is their agenda twenty one uh, Rockefeller Foundation funded, one hundred percent. It says yep. right there. Uh, no doubt. Yeah, it's it, it, Rockefeller Foundation funded agenda twenty one website. So they're condensing all of the populations. They have the plan to condense everyone, double the population around the borders. Which, by the way, if anyone doesn't realize, the borders are all constitution free zones at this moment. A uh, hundred miles within the the border is a constitution free zones. So just to uh, point out, obviously that has to be <laughs> not protected by your own freaking laws. Exactly. That, that, so that, that, look how they're going to connect that. But we have we have here in Canada, by the way, and this is what people have to understand. We have a joint border patrol. So there's American drones flying in our skies, and that is supposed to be a hundred miles on either side, and that's a. a courtesy of Stephen Harper and, and Barack Hussein uh, Obama, right, that uh, they brought this, this thing in. So 
Agenda 21 is 100% real. I have no doubts in my mind that you can go on United Nations, you could Google, you could check out all the maps that they have, you could check for your own region to show you exactly if you're living out in, in the country, forget about it. You're not going to live there in 20 years because they're going to figure out a way to get you out of there. And it's happening right across the world. I give the examples of uh, Newfoundland, for instance, uh, how they're just closing down old communities, old fishing villages, and a lot of these places in Newfoundland are only reachable by sea. So they're going after these old communities where people have lived for hundreds of years and saying, well, I'm going to relocate you now <laughs> into the suburbs. Here's your television and your, your little hut, right? Um, you know, this is all going on. I don't buy at all, personally, the Yellowstone. I think that's a psyop to keep people uh, occupied. Um, I don't think there's anything you could do. I think if Yellowstone were to erupt and it was a super volcano, most of us would die. Ninety percent of the population would be wiped out. So that would definitely play into their their cards. But it would also yeah, wipe out most of of North America. It would destroy all the cities. Uh, it would destroy all the beautiful uh, wildlife. It would ninety percent of species would probably be wiped out off the planet. It would be three years where no crops grown and uh, you know sky that's just black or gray or whatever. It would be just hell on earth. So I don't see the point. Personally, this is my humble opinion uh, of of worrying about Yellowstone because if it happens, well, <laughs> cancel Christmas, cancel everything. <laughs> it's, it, you know, it's going to be pretty shitty unless you've got a good stock of liquor on hand. Uh, it's not going to be fun for you at all. So, and not uh, not I, only, sorry, yeah, not not only that, they're they're really they can't like predict an eruption. Uh, far in advance, they would have. I think it was what? What was it like? Two weeks' notice or something like that? Like it really wouldn't be enough time to to do anything. Exactly. Yeah. No. 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 Well. 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 That's the thing about that is, guys. Which I, that's why I love coming. Hey, that's we all have dis different opinions, and like I told yeah, you, that, Jeff, we we hey, agree. Hey, change my mind, Red Pill. I'm gonna duke it out. <laughs> yeah. No. 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 Yeah. Well, if you guys don't know, you know, me and Jeff, you disagree on this. I mean. I totally disagree. Uh, I was talking with 49 about it yesterday, and mm -hmm. she completely agrees uh, that uh, they. Here's the thing: you have to remember that they can absolutely um, orchestrate an eruption. They can just harp that sucker up, and, or whatever, and they can er erupt that as any time they want. And so, which means they can plan around that. Definitely, yeah, I absolutely destroy believe that. The United States. I mean, do, do they want to destroy? No, no, no. Well, yeah, if they, they don't destroy all of the United States, they won't destroy all of the United States. That's the point. Uh, that's the point. And I now, the, if they, it, well, what I'm saying is, so if you take that into account, and then you connect that with, uh, of course, you connect that with the future capital, their 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 underground base, safe haven of Denver, and that's why, well, that's what all I was pointing out is that it made sense. Now, if you consider and take into account that they can orchestrate an eruption and cause an eruption, that's what that's all I was saying. And yep. and and but. For me, I disagree. I actually think there's some legitimacy to it. I think it's different than the comet I saw on your, your, your usual fear mongering. And <laughs> I, think, I think that there's also rumors that trucks, truck drivers have been, <laughs> have been uh, signing uh, confidentiality. Uh, yeah. agreements but that, and, that could and be psyop as well. I mean, that, that they they could want us to waste our time going on about because they. I mean, who who films the buff the bison running down the the street, and then all of a sudden, you know, it goes crazy, goes viral. Next thing you know, there's there's caribou or there's whatever running this way or that way. Uh, right, right. I just I just like that kind of like to me the elites that are are, are running this planet. Are naturalists, right? First yes. and foremost, and they love planet Earth, and they want to see the the cancer that is humanity wiped out. They want us to not have children. That's for sure. That's why they make stuff like epicyte corn, yes. um, genetically modified foods, Codex Alimentarius. It's all about trying to stop us from having offspring, and that's why it's so much harder for people to have babies today <laughs> than it was before, um, because there's all these chemicals and pharmaceuticals and fluoride in the water and everything else. They know that they can get the right cocktail, so I've always kind of had it in mind that there was a slow kill in, 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 in work, where it would be like children of men, where we get to a point where men were no longer... Uh, fertile, right? Uh, it would just be, you know, it'd be horrible. Nobody would be able to have babies, except the elite, of course, because they have all the best food and and medicine and everything else, and they're not being poisoned by the stuff that we're being poisoned with. 
Um, I don't see that. Uh, I, I do not see them as wanting to destroy the uh, United States. And I know you say it wouldn't completely destroy it, but it would destroy a ton. I mean, it would be awful. It would just... It, well, and it also, you don't know. I mean, if they really believe in global warming, I have no idea if that's just their freaking... No, that's still a psyop for us. They don't believe in yeah, this. Yeah, it's a psyop. But no, well, maybe some of them do, right? Whatever. But uh, that's yeah, another. Yeah, the lower the lower level clowns that uh, yeah, the outer circle idiots. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but I mean, level. if 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 even if global warming, say if it was hypothetically speaking for a moment, if global warming was real, well, a super volcano <laughs> would put put that into you know it would be into super overdrive. It, the planet would may never recover. I mean, the planet could turn into Venus. It could. It really could. I mean, that's that's physically possible. Yeah, for, yeah. But it, but global warming is not real, so we don't have to consider. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I agree with that. I don't believe it. But uh, I, what are I you say, still, are you feeling for global warming here, Jeff? No. <laughs> Expose. No. Busted. What I can say is that I believe that they love this planet even more than we do because they're the ones that have the jet airplanes and helicopters to be able to go to see these pristine locations and Ted Turner's Buffalo and all this. I don't believe they want to destroy oh, continent right, right. North that's America. Why they, that's why they want to get rid of us, man, because so yeah, they can yeah. have their planet well, back. <laughs> that's, what, that's, that's what, what that's, I want to say, if I could just finish up for a second here on my thought, is that I think the the for me... The most logical thing, bar none, is a viral uh, outbreak. I think yep. that is something that they could completely control. And, of course, the, the real death would be in the solution. Problem, reaction, solution. Of course, the vaccinations themselves would make you, at the very minimum, sterile. Maybe give you cancers. Maybe make you die 10, 15, 20 years earlier. Who knows, right? But they have been working on this shit for a very long time. So I really think the big psyop is is in all the movies dealing with with uh, an outbreak, a hemorrhagic fever or whatever that they can control, that they can convince that everyone is 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 in danger, and then people will line up because they've been conditioned over and over by the the, the lunatics on CNN telling you to get your flu shots, to get this, to get that, right? So I really think that to me makes way more sense than messing with Mother Nature. And no, no, our civilization has never gone through a super volcano. Well, yeah, maybe we have when we were we were. Uh, no, actually, we haven't because there hasn't been one in however many million years, right? If I'm not mistaken, or is it hundreds of thousands of years? Hundreds of thousands. No, no there's been one, but it's yeah. Okay, it so yeah, we, humans have only been around for a hundred thousand years. So, pardon but me. I said humans you know, well, have only been around for about 100,000 years. Yeah, if you go by evolution, and, and, and you know, we've been around for four and a half, we've been evolving for four and a half million years. I know a lot of people are going to be pissed off, say, Jeff, you're fucking atheist, you know, all this shit. But that's a different thing, right? I'm not going to get into that. Uh, yes, we've lived uh, uh, as a species through uh, winters, like uh, extended long, super cold uh, winters, uh, ice ages and stuff like yes. that, and barely fucking survive, barely fucking survive uh, if we go by the science that uh, has been uncovered with these things. So I, I think that you cannot put a cap on something like Yellowstone. If they temper, tankered or tinkered with it, they would. if they set that thing off... <sighs> Forget about it. I mean, no, I no, no. See that? That's hold on. If I can, if I can read. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> Take your best it, shot. It, that's why I completely. <laughs> that's why I still completely disagree. Because if you want to point to, we're talking about predictive programming, right? Okay. Yeah. So if you want to go and talk about predictive programming and all of the evidence and everything they put out there and what their plans are, right? You, <laughs> you, you I, t I've talked about this uh, some. Um, uh, quite a bit on my channel in the past about this uh, great purge, right? This cleansing of the planet that they want. Now, if you look, it's all it's prophesied that, uh, and also in predictive programming, the evidence evidence suggests that they want this. They want this sort of hell on earth scenario. They absolutely they it's their fetish. Okay, they want that scenario to happen. Believe me, Jeff. Now, that's also why in the murals themselves you have fire engulfing the planet. You have this nuclear, you know, imagery uh, fetish and 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 destruction fetish because that is in the cards. That's what they want. So yes, they. You love also you. have, if you're talking Denver Airport, you also have the plague, right? You right, exactly. So that's why, exactly. That's why I think they want. They could have both or multiple. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, did you think they'll just do it sort of all at the same yeah, time? Yeah. Exactly. It's you a combined. Know, remember, combined the disasters on the Illuminati card. <laughs> End times, like that's what they're trying to bring. Well, about. of course, exactly. See, now you can yeah. go ahead and remember those people who say, you know, we have people. We have two people, two kinds of people who think they're planning 
are they're following the Bible like a playbook, right? And or, and of course you have people, of course, who say, you know, it is the Bible, that is the truth. Well, whatever the case may be, we know that they're, that's part of what they're doing, okay? And we know that's that at the very least. So if we take that into account, we realize that yes, they want this sort of cleansing of the earth, which a super volcano would cleanse the earth in the way that in many years it'll all balance itself out and they will be in control. So in that regard, in that uh, context, I. Th I think it is very possible, yeah, they, and I think they, they are. I think they, they're not stupid enough to think that they could actually control that. Nor do I think no, that not control it, but they can cause an eruption. And and, and <laughs> who said? Who you said? Talk about opening Pandora's box. I mean, opening no, that. It's not, it's not Pandora's box, Jeff. You can, you can, you can. The the well, the world will balance itself out after several years, and since they will all be protected in their bunkers, they can reemerge with control. What I. It's not yeah, like the, if you see the bunkers, right? I've seen stuff on YouTube and, and on television and stuff dealing with the bunkers and stuff. That doesn't look like fun either. It looks like fucking crap, right? And they're gonna have to live there for five, six years till they can clean <laughs> out. Then they gotta on, clean up everything, right? right? I, I, look, I don't, I don't, I don't know about that. I think it's luxurious, but hey, that's just me. I mean, don't, that's don't you think it makes more sense that they do it without having to destroy? Um, well, no, every, no. You know what? I, you know what, Jeff? I agree with you there. I agree, but the evidence and all of the predictive programming and what is, you know, uh, pointing to that, it contradicts. It, it actually points the other direction. Well, what, if, what if those are like false positives? You know what I mean? Like they're they're sort of seeding these these different potential. We're getting echo. Population-ending scenarios. Oh, and just they're not going to follow through with all the even well, though they, yeah, programming and evidence point. pointing to. I don't think so. I think it's all pointing to their plan, which is total fucking combined devastation and <laughs> combined and disasters. Chaos on Earth. Combined disasters. The Illuminati card. I mean, look, that's what I believe, and I'm going to stick to it. That's that's. There you go. Yeah, that's true. I forgot about the Illuminati card. Yeah. Yeah. I think they do put in. Uh, I, I think they put in landmines though. I think they put on things that we might be able, they, we might uh, hook on to, that they're really just uh, taking us down a rabbit hole that didn't exist. Yeah, so I think yeah. a lot of times that that does happen. I'm not saying that this is uh, that the Yellowstone is the case. Uh, I'm just going on what I just came into on the conversation. I've been having uh, internet problems. Um, ah, that's but, fine. Uh, okay. Well, I just want to yeah. look, 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 look. I just want to state that. I, I'm the last guy to fear monger. You, I, you search my channel, everyone. That's for everyone listening. I, I don't have one video on Yellowstone. I don't have one video on Common Ice on. I'm not trying to fear monger. I'm just stating that hey, you know what? It's been in the evidence points to this, and I, I that's what I believe. So uh, that's why I made that connection with the Agenda 21 maps, and I'm just throwing it out there. But th I do believe that. Though. Yeah, I think but I think I, uh, with the Agenda 21, that is really something real, and. When you look at that and you look at the detail, for instance, with the North American maps, you don't really see all this destruction at hand. What you do see is that it would take enormous amounts of um, control of the population, depopulation, essentially, right? One way or another, they're going to have to depopulate nine-tenths to be able to carry out Agenda 21. And we know that that's what their real plan is. I don't doubt that for a minute. I think that that's the way that they think. I think they, you can hear it all the time. I mean, whether we're talking about professors from, like, University of Texas or other scientists, um, if you heard the Truth Stream uh, video the, from uh, earlier this week, I get the echo. <laughs> Um, that uh, Mr. There, there Echo was, has come in to say hello. Yeah, who's got the Echo going? I don't know. What it is. But anyways, if you hear if you you hear uh, a lot of this language that's coming out of the um, academia, along with it, along with a lot of the leaders. I mean, if you take uh, historically a lot of their talk, like Ted Turner and people like Kissinger, who talk about depopulation. Of course, Bill Gates, his father being the head of Planned Parenting or Pr Planned Parenthood, sorry, and uh, you know, his whole strategy of vaccinations. I really think their strategy is vaccinations. I think that's what they've been working on forever. But I must caution the listeners that I've done a lot of work into genetically modified foods and Codex Alimentarius. And if you haven't checked out this thing, you must know about epicyte corn because they made this special type of corn and it's supposed to be in a lab, you know, buried deep beneath the earth and not nowhere, anywhere else, you know, sort of thing. But it turned up in fields in Oregon in 2013. And this corn, if you eat it, you'll never have kids.
And <laughs> that, to me, oh, is man. the scary fucking shit. Because if, in my mind, if they can clean up, if they can clean up the population the way that they see it, right? Get rid of the bottom feeders. What did uh, Mark Dice call them? Useless eaters. Useless right? eaters. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting that he used that word because that's the word that the Rockefellers would use, basically, right, to, to describe us, the useless feeders. Um, so, um, so if they really wanted to get rid of us in a cleaner way without destroying their beautiful playground and Ted Turner's buffaloes and all the wonderful things that they've got, um, they can do it. They have the technology. They have the ability to do this now, and we have to really be wary of that. It's That's the way I see it. Way I see it. Yeah, for sure. Um, the one thing I wanted to uh, bring up uh, uh, was just to uh, make a comment on the the similarities between the two maps. Not the uh, Yellowstone one, um, though I do see uh, the similarities there. I definitely do. Um, but specifically the first two, um, the, the comparison um, between things like uh, the Ebola ones and then your sectors. I think it might have been missing one sector, one main sector on the map, but the first time I saw the uh, the Ebola uh, divisioning, I thought exactly what you were talking about, uh, Red Pill. I, I totally thought that it looked exactly how they wanted it to be for Agenda 21. It might have been missing a region, I think, Right, and of course, with the inclu uh, included the Denver area. Can you area show area. those maps uh, while we're talking about them? Sure. Um, uh, I'll try in a second. Give me a second. Okay, no problem. Um, in the meantime, guys, I uh, I wanted to point people to that recent Corbett Report video, um, basically touching on everything we're. Uh, talking about right now in terms of uh, the Ebola virus and depopulization. So uh, I really recommend people go check out that video. It's called The Ebola Effect, Hyping the Next Bioweapon for Fear and Profit. And yep. he, re he really does a, a, a lot of great research and, and, again, touches on everything we've been talking about. So if, if you're curious about uh, learning a little bit more, uh, getting you know more granular in the research. Go check out that video. I agree. Uh, I, I saw that video, and and I can I can concur with Dave. Uh, what Corbett did was he got through the the misinformation that's out there, and I thought I did that too with with some of my videos because there was misinformation with regards to did did the United States patent the Ebola virus and stuff like that. You know the the absolutely. The, the stuff like that, and he went through it all and, and explained it soberly, but he also, by the end, was saying, you know, if you're going to do it, just like I've been saying, that is the way to do it, and this could be a test run. It could be the real run, but it could be a test run. It could be 10, 15 years down the road where they, they've got it all ready. They've built all these, you know, billions of virus. Um, they've got it all ready to go out, to roll it out, or maybe they're going to do it sooner. I don't know, but to me... I really get scared when, when I get into these type of things because I, I really think that's how they think. And I think you can see it, the proof's in the pudding. You could look at uh, Bill Gates' history, what he's done in Africa with his vaccinations, the effects. They test these things. First, they test them on animals, right, for, for, for a long time. Then they test them on humans, Africans, unfortunately, right, who get yeah. the first, always get the raw and the stick. <laughs> yeah, right? They're going to get the corn. Yeah, they'll get the epicyte corn. Like, it's probably being grown there wholesale, and they don't even know it. It tastes good. Looks like corn. Tastes like corn. I mean, we know that's how GMOs work. It's right? Uh, it, the, well, only the birds. Yeah. And and to me, it's one of the biggest battles uh, for me. That's why I've covered Monsanto so much with my channel. I think it's one of the deepest, darkest, most evil things uh, in the world, Monsanto is beyond evil. It's the most evil corporation in the world. And if you don't know that, please check out some of the videos on my channel. And, of course, watch The World According to Monsanto, some of the great documentaries that have been made. They really are fucking with us through the food. That is why cancer rates are going through the roof. That is why autism and all these other disorders, the, you know, all these things that are making our kids 
um, you know, not be able to focus and, and, and pay attention in school and stuff like that is perfect for them because they always have another solution for them, right? Yeah. But the food is, is really the most disturbing part of it all. And if you think about epicyte corn, this is not a fantasy. They have corn that w if you eat it just once, it will make you sterile for life. So, you know, if, if you know me, I go to the supermarket and if I see corn USA, I avoid it like the Black Death. And I see people hunkered over, frickin', you know, grabbing as many co cobs as they can. I feel like telling them, you know, but of course if I do, I'll look like a lunatic. <laughs> but I right. uh, don't know. Sorry, sorry if I may so, uh, interject here. Yep. Um, I have the maps here. Um, if you awesome. guys want to share my screen um, here, okay. Yep. Is it showing for everyone? Oh, yeah. Yep. Right. Now, oh, that's the other one. I wanted to show that for police state. Oh, here's the Agenda 21 maps uh, map here. Uh, this is the Agenda 21 map. And as you see here, it's um, almost the same area. So is this what you were talking about, uh, Justin? And here's the Denver, of course, area right here, the Denver region, mega region. Wow. Right? Now, of course, right there, <sighs> Mac, right in the middle of Denver International Airport. Fuck, man. You know what this makes me think of? What's that? The, hung the Hunger Games map. Well, yeah, I pointed that out in my video. Did you yep. see that? Uh, may, no, I think I missed that. Oh one. yeah, no, Dave. Uh, I actually pointed that out in the, well, in the video. There you go. Yeah, yeah. So if you guys missed it, yep, it uh, the Denver. Uh, we're talking about predictive programming. The uh, the the Hunger Games map showing all of the districts here. Uh, the districts. Yeah. Uh, features this area as the capital. Just further confirming what my belief has always been. So. Was this off of um, the United Nations website? This, this is off of the no the Rockefeller Foundation uh, ah, America America nice. 2050 website, right here. I covered it in my video here. Yeah. And also, guys, there's an EU. Uh, uh, thanks. By the way, thank you. Shout out to uh, my assistant and head of my research team over at WPR <laughs> headquarters of Chrissy Tokyo. <laughs> she <laughs> she pointed yes yes she pointed this website out here um, and there's more on the EU's involvement here with this 2050 plan. But this plan outlines here featuring a bunch of cubes all over this website. By the way, look at this. Uh, the plan starts at 2020 uh, and then basically finishing off in 2050. So, I mean, look at this. You know, it's just quite revealing. Their plan yeah, they, is right in plain sight regarding this agenda. It is in plain plan. sight, as we say, uh, right? There's yep. an Adobe file on that website, if you look somewhere. I think it's on that website. And they yeah. have a mural, and they also have, like, a, a outline of, like, their of what they want to accomplish by 2050 and all these uh, crazy things on it. It's somewhere on there. Uh, can you yeah. bring up that cube again? Yeah. <laughs> uh, is that a swastika I see in the front? Probably, yeah, absolutely. That's the way they it's code it, Action right? 2020, yeah. more than just a project. And in fact, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Cubes, <laughs> cubes are often in the, the, I believe, the Carnegie and the uh, Rockefeller Foundation use similar type cubes as their logo, and I was always hoping that somebody would, would go through and kind of decode those those symbols that they use because they're obviously coding something in their logos, right? Yes. So, no. uh, they also have... They Go also ahead. have the hive, um, the hive on uh, the hive symbol on somewhere on that website as well. And the background is cubes, not just yes. that one little symbol. Yes. It's like the whole thing. Yes, and that goes yeah. along with the whole theme of hive mind collective Borg cube, right? But the Borg collective. Now, uh, I want to point out again. Here's another website, uh, Vision 2050. And 2050, remember the UCLA uh, scientist, Earth scientist, uh, that was uh, promoted by Forbes uh, and Agenda 21, um, he wrote this book, uh, America in 2050, and he has no relation to the you know, agenda to these websites or anything. He is just a scientist for UCLA. Of course, he put 2050 in his book. So, you know, it all connects here, and um, I'm going to show you guys the PDF here, but, uh, yeah, it's just quite revealing everything here. I'm going to do a follow-up video on this to show all of you guys, but... Um, they, they even have, you can even check out the up, they, they, they even, if I'm not mistaken, I remember checking this out two years ago or whatever, but they have Agenda 21 um, sort of progress rates, like you can actually go on their website and see how much they've achieved, of, and they'll have all these different bars kind of showing the progress rate of, of what they're doing. Like they, It's so creepy because, of course, 
It's hidden in plain sight. We're not supposed to talk about it, yet it's there. You'll never hear a politician ever mention it in, in, in Canada or United States. Uh, it's like it doesn't exist, and yet this is what the world is being moved towards. This is, you know, I mean, that's that's why I laugh about these people that have all these different philosophies and stuff, and they think, well, the, you know, the world's moving in a, in a better place. No, the world is moving where they want it to move. They are moving us. They are hurting us. Closer and closer to the new world order. Yeah, exactly. I mean, every single day we get closer. The every single day, Codex Alimentarius gets closer to being achieved. Every single day, our food is more irradiated. It's more uh, toxic and less nutritious. <laughs> every single day, we live lo less. Uh, we don't live as long, and we get more cancers. And every single day, people are becoming more infertile. So it, it's uh, all happening. Uh, we're watching it happen, roll out in kind of a slow time. Um, but when you click onto these types of websites, you can see the, the the greater picture that they have in mind. I mean, the real darkness that uh, is moving the world, and and how it's all clandestine in one sense. But then you know you can just go on the website and check it out. It's all there in front of you. But don't try and show that to your friends and family because they'll look at you like you're from Mars, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, um, so. Did everyone see the, uh, yeah, so there you go. I mean, it all connects, and uh, just wanted to point that out because we, uh, we're, I mean, look, we would have been talking about this still uh, if, you know, we weren't so bombarded with everything, you know, uh, this Robin Williams, and we're just inundated, so it's hard to even continue research on certain things, right? So, um, and make videos about them. So yeah, how absolutely. do you think we diversify on this? I mean, what what is the solution? Because I don't see the end... Um, coming anytime soon. I think really since the April shootings, all of these false flags or whatever, ever since then, we haven't really stopped. There has been maybe a lull in between just this, a constant barrage of non-stop hoaxes, just media bullshit. I mean, w what can we do as a community? Because, well, maybe a community, but a collective wow. of... Wow. Close the door. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that was... <laughs> now, Justin, Justin, can you can you turn up your volume? You're a bit low. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is this a little better? That's better. Yeah, that's better. Yes. Okay, it's my microphone. Um, so basically, yeah, I'm just trying to talk a little bit low now. It's a little bit late uh, where I am. Okay. Um, so basically, where do we go from here? Because I don't think there's going to be any end to this. Uh, barrage of all different types of events happening um, that are uh, kicked up a, a big fuss about. Um, I don't see this stopping anytime soon. It hasn't since April at least. Um, I think this is their... Um, I, I think we need to almost admit that it is working in a way that it's really taken a lot out of us to be able to try and cover all of this. So how can we maybe diversify or maybe um, uh, like in certain fashions to compartmentalize. I, I, I would just take a stab at that and say that maybe a twofold approach could be used where in one sense you do cover the issues and, and the lies of the corporate media and expose them and stuff uh, if that's what you like to do, like I do, for instance. But on the other hand, you could work on longer term sort of projects, more serious stuff about, say, Agenda 21, Monsanto, things like that, that are you know are here to stay uh, as long as as they have the you know the keys to power sort of thing and until we wake up enough people and until people yeah. show up with pitchforks and and you know and torches uh, outside Monsanto headquarters um, we're you know we're yeah. uh, we're in a, a a long battle sort of thing with yeah. this stuff and we're always like we've got the voice now that's the real difference is that we actually can reach each other we can actually have an audience we can actually communicate with people right around the world instantaneously so that is a huge advantage that we never had before as as you know regular sort of citizens in the world so that is the the gift that we have but of course they have that power too and they have it you know a hundredfold or a thousandfold over us and they have all the money and they own all the networks um, so it's 
it's a real cat and mouse type of game that we're in, and it's very hard for us to stay abreast with all this because we can easily fall down the disinformation. Like a lot of these things, like for instance, Robin Williams, that might be created just to keep us occupied for a week or two, right? And and they throw out all this stuff, and then they giggle, right? <laughs> you know, look at the look at the conspiracy theorists. Oh yeah, they found. Oh, guess what? They found the Family Guy thing. You know? Oh yeah. <laughs> Take long. Who was it that found it? Oh, it was Red Pill, you know, or whatever, right? <laughs> you know, and, and they might do that shit. Who knows, yeah, they, right? They gather Just, around their uh, table and talk about all of us, yeah. Yeah, and it's a, it's uh, it's a it's a it's a dilemma for me because for me, I want to expose the corporate media because I think if we can break down that barrier, um, if we could shatter the illusion, right, that they're actually reporting for you or they're actually working for you to bring you the truth, which is couldn't be further from the truth. I mean, it's it's a joke, of course, when you know what we do about how the manipulation works. Um, that if we could just um, focus on certain areas and then maybe work together on longer term projects to to show the bigger end game, the bigger things that they're going after. Um, then maybe we could put a strategy in play, and if we all kind of work together and support each other's work, uh, that'll help too, and promote other people's videos and promote, you know, get important information out there basically when it needs to get out. Okay, guys. So um, just to let you know, uh, free ra um, free radio. Are we scheduled mm -hmm. to go off right now, or would you like to go a couple of minutes overtime, or what would you think is it's up to you guys. I can go a bit longer if you want. Um, it's totally up to you guys. We can go a quarter after if the audience would like that. If if not, we can leave right now if you guys are sick of us. <laughs> oh, if, you guys are sick, if you guys are sick of us, we can leave right now. Do we have any questions coming in from our audience? Um, we can also take questions. I haven't really had too, too many. I had a few, but they're not really on topic. <clears throat> for what, Okay, what we can move okay. from topic now because we've, um, we've pretty much exhausted it. Somebody a while back, I wrote down the names. Myra Starr asked if you could um, get Paul uh, Watson and what's his name? Paul Watson is that his yeah. name? <laughs> and Mark Dice on so they can talk about their shit. <laughs> and um, <laughs> we'll, we'll, in, we'll invite them. We'll see yeah, send them that. And they also won't be on. Yeah, I, I assume not. <laughs> also, Adrian, sorry, whoever that is, shut the door to Zillow. Um, Adrian Sandez asked if we, or if you guys, could one day, one time cover like how to start, you know, making videos, doing independent journalism, uploading, etc. Like kind of a, you know, a, not a tutorial, but you know, it's how easier to, to how do to that it. kind of stuff in in a personal video than it is yeah. to do it in a group session because it's yeah. it's uh, and there's lots of great videos out there. I mean, if you just do a quick search on YouTube. I'm sure you'd find exactly what you you wanted to do to to start. We could talk a little bit about it. I mean, uh, I I would, I would suggest. Uh, sorry, Jeff, to cut you yep. off. But uh, I would suggest uh, the way I sort of did it was just getting into iMovie. Just check it out um, and just, just <laughs> fuck around in iMovie, man. No I doubt. I fucking hate iMovie. I I swear to God, I don't I know how much I've lost. But it's it's what got me started. Yeah. Yeah. Because well, it was you know, simple to understand and figure out, and you can just do really quick, easy videos. I After would actually that, recommend and, Windows Movie Maker because I found that much more efficient and easier. I use I have an Apple, so I have to use iMovie, and it's awful. It always freezes. It's all, it does it's, freeze a lot. I have Windows Maker, and everyone or someone told me not to bother with it, so I haven't looked at it yet. Yeah, uh, there. I mean, to make YouTube videos, you don't need. A, a huge studio or a super powerful computer, you could do it really on a on, on a bare bones sort of uh, budget. You could really all you need is is your platform base, or you need a, a computer that you can yeah. actually have a, a video editor on. And That's so, if you have like Windows, for instance, or you have Apple, you automatically have uh, one of those video editors uh, mm -hmm. at your disposal. So you can use those. And generally, the less uh, uh, you know, uh, transitions or graphics and stuff that you put in, the the easier it is to produce it, uh, to get it, you know, finalized sort of thing. If you put a lot of uh, little things into it, 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 it can often freeze up. That's what happens with me. So I think often, and also just just a way to uh, sort of plan your videos. Like what I'll do often is, is it, if I'm doing a video and I want to have like a good sort of, um, a lot of good background images, because like what I do, 
if people want to know, is I never ever rehearse anything. I never, I rarely ever use notes. I just go on the fly. Like I know what I'm going to say, and I just start saying it, and it all comes out. And then I, I you know, 15, 20 minutes later, I'm you know sipping a coffee or a beer and uh, starting the production. <laughs> and I'm, so, I'm the exact uh, opposite. I have to like script things and voice things, and you know, yeah. think. Through. Everybody's like, different, different though. Styles, yeah. Yeah, so uh, what I would do is I would, you know, maybe first produce the, the video or at least the audio, and if I want to put images to it, then I'll go over to Google uh, maybe after and start doing image searches. So if I'm doing Sandy Hook, I might be doing, you know, uh, a certain character or a certain event or, you know, and then I'll search for those images and then I'll, I'll have a, a, a special folder that I'll put them all in and then I'll load that into my video editor, which will take forever and it will crash and whatever. But eventually it'll get up and, and, and then I'll be able to produce the video. But you can make videos really quickly by just not, you know, like just talking live. And you could like do what I do a lot of times where I'll just look at articles. I'll often read articles to people and I'll just read them as I see them and then I'll just throw the video up right after and it's pretty lickety split when I do it that way. Another I great tool the way. Uh, for doing that is uh, something actually Kate Slate uses a lot, which is Screencast-O-Matic. So that's where you can just sort of talk and have images on your screen, and it'll capture it, put it into a nice video for you, download it, up, upload it to your YouTube channel, and it's that easy. Yep. I have QuickTime, and it's actually very good for that because same, it doesn't... Same, really also has the same features, absolutely. Yeah, yeah it doesn't have the screen o uh, <laughs> thing yep. that they put in the corner, but... Uh, yeah, the, the idea is simple. You can make videos quickly if you've got a screen capture, and what's cool about that is that you, you're, you're talking while you're showing what's on your screen, and you could use, um, like, you can, you can save it as a low-resolution sort of video so it'll upload a lot quicker. So, like, uh, like, for instance, when it comes to long videos, um, if I got a video that's over an hour, or sometimes like some of the old podcasts that we do at group shows, um, my word, <laughs> it can hmm. take six, eight hours uh, to to upload to YouTube. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I think that for newcomers, definitely, uh, you know, you want uh, you want to write notes on what you're going to say, and, and, and you know, as you make more videos, you're going to gradually just get more, get better and better uh, mm -hmm. at uh, you know, on the fly sort of sort of thing, uh, you know, uh, or you could just still write notes. That's always that's always a good good route to take as well, and just you know, kind of kind of write your notes as you go along, um, and follow those notes. But uh, you know, uh, Screencast-O-Matic, QuickTime, I think are two very very good ones. Uh, Camtasia, if you can get that, get it. Uh, you know, learn it. Or if you want the more basic, then those two mentioned are great. Um, uh, QuickTime is cool though, better than Screencast because you can move your screen. Kind of, you know, right? Yeah, the more. stupidest thing about QuickTime, though, I gotta say, I mean, this one really drove me nuts because they they updated QuickTime, so I was like, all right, cool, they updated it. And what they did, of course, was take away the the minute counter. So when you start recording, you can't see how much time you put on your video. It's absolutely ridiculous. And so what happened with me, of course, was that I was limited by Google for the longest time for a year and a half, over a year and a half, where I couldn't put up more than 15 minutes. So I would be recording the video. I'd have no idea how much time it was. Then I'd go to press the stop button, and I'd see 16 minutes and 30 seconds. Then I'd have to go through the whole lengthy process of pushing that through uh, uh, iMovie and then editing it up, chopping out pieces here and there in order to jam it into a 15-minute video, so it end up taking three, four times as long as it should take, and uh, that's really annoying. But other than that, it works really well. <laughs> um, yeah, and I, I did want to mention, yeah, we we all now have the ability to uh, to upload uh, longer YouTube videos now. You do, I do now. Uh, uh, I know. Well, press on wood. <laughs> I, I, I don't. I'm still limited to my 15 minutes, unfortunately. Oh, you are. Well, I don't know why you got uh, copyrighted, but wow, that's a. Uh, I have two. Video. They gave me a. They gave me a year. What? what? Oh. You're special, Kate. <laughs> that, that's yeah, because it, Kate. That's because Kate. You're the real threat to the establishment. Not oh us. yeah, <laughs> yeah. They're all after me. No, yeah. but they gave me a year for that 60 minutes clip. I was like, what? I didn't even know they could go there. You know, yeah, oh, bullshit. You know, that just shows Kate Slate like, that you are the real deal. Public okay? enemy number one, Kate. You are it. Girl. <laughs> Yeah, you guys can talk about me next week. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You've taken over. You're no longer Mark Dice is our target. Now it's Kate Slate. <laughs> look, 
Look, Kate, you know I love you. You know I would do a 1,000 special, one, I mean, I'm not 1,000, one hour special of uh, Kate Slate, you know, on my channel, so. Okay, you're on. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a game, it's a game that we're always playing with Google. Uh, Google could come after you right out of the blue. You have no idea. You have no freaking clue. As I told you, the day that my account was supposed to be strike-free, I get hit by a, a strike on the stupidest thing ever, violence and gore on a, at a video of Elliot Rodger driving around listening to 80s music. You know, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the power that Google has. And you, you go to contest it because they give you a right to appeal, and your appeal it's overturned in 0 0.05 seconds. I mean, it's like instantly <laughs> there's your appeal. It's rejected. Thanks. Thanks. Well, thanks for thinking about it at least. You know. <laughs> now, how do, how do, I was wondering, uh, please state, are you there? He's quiet. He's been quiet lately. Yeah. Okay, maybe he's uh, out of the room. But uh, uh, just to answer a question, I, yeah, I use Sony Vegas, Sony Vegas Pro uh, 12. So just to answer that. Um, now, uh, Press Reset was talking about editing and how what's a simpler way to edit. Uh, uh, a simpler simpler u tool to use to edit, uh, you can also edit in Camtasia Studio. That allows for editing and recording. So uh, I, I would recommend that to go for more basic. But I have an actual, actually a, a little trick up my sleeve. Um, I get, and this helps out with a lot of the copyright shit. Um, yeah. I have a membership to Video Blocks, which gives me it's like stock video uh, footage. Um, so there's a lot of like cool templates in there. Like I did it for my uh, top ten fake shooting video. Like I used some of their stock uh, stock footage. Um, so the memberships are pretty cheap. It's like I think it's I don't know eighty bucks or something for six months, and uh, and you get all kinds of like uh, yeah like rights free uh, music and. Uh, and all kinds of I great. I don't think I don't think Press Reset Earth can uh, afford that. By the way. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, we can't all afford the great tools, but you know, that's I'm a good idea, though. That because uh, I thought about that stock footage before, um, but you know, I figure like if people are wondering, I think most corporate media stuff you can cover. There's a channel called Mox News, and he basically just throws up uh, all the stuff that he records. So he's still running. He's got. He's always running into trouble, though. I mean, there's a, they're always coming after him. But he basically puts up. That's where I get most of my news clips from, uh, because I figure if he's going to be able to put it up, uh, I should be able to put it up too. And uh, usually, what I do, of course, is offer the commentary. So I people would be familiar with my channel would be familiar with the warning I used to put in the beginning there, you know, where I say this is 100% nonprofit for educational purposes. The reason I had to do that is because I was constantly getting hit with copyright attacks over and over again. So it, it's 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 part of the uh, chance you take when you put up a video. You never know they could come after you. Now they're less likely to come after you with a new segment than they are, say, with a personal sort of segment that's been produced by some sort of uh, entertainment uh, corporation like yeah. Deseret Digital News, for instance, that came after me dealing with Robert Robbie Parker and uh, the most ridiculous video I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Which is the Mormon Church, just to make sure everybody knows. That exactly. is literally the Mormon Church, Deseret News. Very powerful yeah. media outlet out of Salt Lake, and they will take if you cover their videos, they will come after you, uh, and uh, they can shut you down. So, be careful with that kind of stuff. But I think if it's CNN or, or Fox or any or BBC, you're you're usually going to be safe. I've even been contacted by BBC. It's hilarious. I've had BBC people contact me saying, "Can I use your video clip?" <laughs> Wow! Um, no, you're, I knew. Okay, that's it. Exposed free radio. That's <laughs> it. It, Busted. That's, you, just, you are you are really tempting me, uh, yeah. Jeff, to put up I'm your video. I'm working for that one-eyed brain sucker of the British Broadcasting or British bullshit <laughs> no. corporation. No. Hey guys, no. uh, we we are getting a request to discuss ISIS, and I thought instead of tackling that this week, why don't we potentially put that on deck for next week? Yeah, I was yeah, right. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, we'll we'll have to to do that next week because it's too big of a subject, Absolutely. and I would I would like to do some research and 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 stuff. And then I haven't covered ISIS, um, and uh, I would be very suspicious about all that. But yeah, we'll get into that next week. So yeah, you know. I think it's a pretty important uh, topic to discuss. You know? Yeah, yeah, it's it's definitely, and there's so much going on in the world. I mean, we haven't touched Gaza, you know, uh, MH17, uh, all these different things. Huge so maybe, false flags. 
Maybe Sorry? That's what we can do. Maybe that's what we can do next week. Oh, oh, that's right. Uh, I wanted to mention the uh, go on, off that more on the uh, Mormon connection. Of course, Mormons with the Sandy Hook, and then you have a again with the Houston shooting hoax, uh, mm -hmm. uh, the yeah. Mormon connection, right? So the Mormon uh, connection is very, very uh, deeply connected to the occult and uh, to the yeah, uh, it is. And I'm uh, an ex-Mormon actually. And guys, yeah. if Aaron is here, I don't think he's back yet, but the uh, they're very connected to the CIA as well. Definitely. And also monarch programming and uh, mind control is a big thing in Mormons. So uh, it, it's it's definitely a very occultish type religion. And it's not to insult most Mormons are probably terrific people, but there is a huge power structure within there, and uh, that is how a lot of these these organizations work. So, yeah, so wasn't uh, uh, Cassidy Stay, right? Cassidy Stay and the Stay family supposedly Mormons, right? Yes, yes, yep. exactly. And okay. boy, oh boy, you wouldn't Same believe the brothers. threats I got off that. So no, if those no, are Mormons no. laying those threats, those are not godly people, I'll tell you. Oh, no, no, their god, their god is Dumbledore. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's That's, get it real. Let's get it straight here, guys. That's just the real truth of the matter. Dumbledore uh, from Kalab. Huh? And 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 Dumbledore and people... from Kalab. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They worship oh, Dumbledore and a Harry Potter shrine yeah. over there. And, uh, Aaron, we're talking Planet about Kolob. <laughs> yeah, we're talking about Mormons and the CIA and all the their deep connections. You know a lot about this stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's it's uh, quite now, something. Of course, of course, the Houston shooting hoax. Some another thing that the uh, uh, most of our lovely people at, at the uh, of the mainstream alternative media failed to cover. Of course, you know Infowars and none of them, not one word on the Houston shooting hoax, which is very revealing. And that's why it was so um, it was so refreshing to me. I see a lot of people realizing that and commenting, saying, "Hey, not a word there." I see what you're saying, Red Pill. This and that and the other. One so. thing that people can always do to help out is that if you can't make videos, you can take our videos and upload them to your channel, and that gives them a second life. And I, I always encourage people to do that because I don't monetize my work. As long as you don't monetize it or claim it as your own, you are free to do so, and you help the whole movement because my stuff gets taken down, and I get threats and all this stuff. So we need we need everybody to kind of chip in whatever they can. I mean, sometimes chipping in means just leaving some comments and support in, in the videos, putting the uh, pushing that thumbs up. That's always important for, for us doing this because it gives us an idea of how many people are appreciating what we're doing. Of course, have, leaving a comment's even better. So all these little things. with a share. Like, yeah, man, share I in the video. I love getting those shares. Well, really, I always tell people, look, it doesn't matter how obscure you think you, your channel will be or whatever, please make a channel, especially you ladies out there, you females, please, please make a channel and add to whatever uh, work, that, whatever research you want to share. It, it always helps. You know, it, it definitely helps no matter how, uh, even if it's just you think it's you're just one person, no, it's a big help. So definitely don't be scared to uh, yeah, make your own channel and videos. And I told this to uh, Chrissy Tokyo as well. She... Definitely, <laughs> she could tackle that, and we're we're all here to help you. We're all here to help each other, and and anyone who has any questions on your, making your own channel, you know, could always ask us. So yeah, if if I have one thing to say, it's find your voice, you know, just find your voice yeah. and, and and say something. Wait, eat something you know? Don't use the freedom you have; it'll be gone before you know it. So if if you if you think that yeah. using your voice is going to make you a target, hey, watching our videos has already put you on a list. So. Yeah, make make yeah. some noise because you might not be here tomorrow. Yeah, you might as well go down, you know, fighting, go down, you fighting, and down. yelling, and right. Screaming and and I think and kicking and screaming. I, right? I think it's really important to point out as well. I mean, like for the I've started my chance. Uh, my channel's been about I don't know four months now, I guess. Um, and through all of that, I mean, the the people that are doing all the other channels, like Free Radio Revolution, Police State Radio, um, Red Pill, um, I mean, everybody chips in, and like, uh, everybody is really helpful. Like, they, they will show you the way if you ask them private questions. That's why I like, I really like the conversation we just had. Uh, people were showing uh, how they do uh, come up with the, the methods. Um, to explore different uh, events. Um, I think it's really important um, that we recognize that there is a lot of help for you. If Even though, I mean, I started off, I really knew nothing. I didn't know how to make 
any videos whatsoever. The last one I did was like eight years ago, which actually has a quarter of a million views now on another channel. That's deadly. Hey. That's <laughs> oh, not so bad, man. That is that, yeah, is, that is beastly, uh, Justin. That's way yeah. to go. Thanks. I'll send it over to you later. What was it on? Just, it was just about Newfoundland. It was just a. It was a scenes uh, along to uh, a song. Uh, and basically, that's just the video. It was just this small wow. thing. I never really did anything political. And I guess Newfoundlanders, uh, basically all the comments were people that were not in Newfoundland talking about wanting to come home because of this song or whatever. Yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, basically, I, I really didn't know how to make much of this. And yeah, and I, I, I could say to listeners, man, uh, I worked my butt off for so long to get a following. And uh, I think in a way it's it's gotten it's a really good time to get in now because I think you can get a following a lot quicker because I think a lot more people are like when I got on to it and I was doing group shows and it was heavy production and all this stuff. Um, most people that would follow uh, you know alternative media were following stuff like Alex Jones and now mm -hmm. a lot of those people are now following channels like us because they find the alternative to the alternative. So I think there, there is a much bigger uh, following to be had at this point in time than there would have been a, a few years ago. And, and uh, that's a great thing. It's a great thing for anybody who wants to start up their own channel. You, you know, right away, if you come out with a really solid video, you'll get a lot of attention and people will support you. And you get so much conversation. That is, like, so cool. I didn't realize how many different viewpoints you would get on something that, you know, um, you know that your opinion uh, played a contribution in. Um, so if they didn't like it, they let you know. A lot of people are very constructive, um, they're, they're, um, as well as the trolls, whatever. <laughs> um, but there's a lot. Hey, tro trolls, we love you too, trolls. Yeah, man. <laughs> I, I love their insightful Thumb, comments. Thumbs up. I'm smiling <laughs> right now in case you don't know. <laughs> but when you when you have a channel, um, once you kind of become a little bit of a hub for other people to speak, um, you you can read and contribute in some amazing talks with people that you may not have been able to connect with if you didn't have a channel. So I think that's like one of the most important things I've noticed. And man, this community uh, this community is one of the most helpful ones out there. Um, like it. it Absolutely, I would highly recommend doing so just for the sake that you yourself will become much more aware as you progress through it, uh, as long as you keep looking for the truth. Exactly. Yeah, man. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead, Chris. I was going to say exactly what you're saying because honestly, like, uh, if I, I wouldn't be here if I hadn't have uh, watched Jeff's channel and joined and then start, started leaving all sorts of comments and then uh, just uh, commenting on all sorts of other channels. So and, how. You know, Absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's how some people uh, get into it just by being active on on certain channels and leaving lots of comments, like Chrissy, right? And yeah, I they get engaged. Her for, yeah, they get, they get motivated. They get like motivated. I, I know who my loyal sort of followers and and commenters are. I mean, I recognize them. I know them. Uh, maybe not by face or anything like that, but by their avatar and uh, all the things that they do. So it's 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 all we're all part of it. I mean, it, there there is for me. There's no free radio revolution unless I have the audience, you know, that uh, I have. So just to, uh, name, just to name just to name on a few channels that uh, that it are within the situ within this context that we're talking about here. It's a uh, like um, there's a subscriber named Eternal Watchman. There's a, a uh, Truth Paradigm. She contributed to Sandy Hook. She exposed that actor, Kevin Mark. I actually just talked to her. Don't talk yeah. to Justin about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, um, you know, just all of these little channels, and, and they kind of started their own work, and, mm -hmm. and, you know, they contribute so much. So just don't think that you are uh, insignificant. Any, you know, any, ever. Don't ever think that. So I just want to put state that, and uh, guys, closing in here soon. We're gonna yep. be closing gonna here soon. So, so I wanna, yeah, I wanna tell, uh, ask um, Police State if he's still around, or Justin Bryant, what you guys, uh, you know, what you guys, your channel again, what you guys are doing, and what we have to look forward to, and what you guys have, what you guys have to look forward to um, here moving forward. If you guys want to, uh, go ahead. Yeah, sure. Would you like to start, Aaron? I don't know if Aaron's around. I think he was having trouble with. Uh, He's got it. It's the truth. I think he was having trouble with. Uh, <laughs> with uh, I think. Uh, I think he was having trouble. Uh, Tina Fey or uh, Sarah yeah. Palin, his wife, was having some. 
Yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Got to fill in because his 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 wife is out there playing all these other characters on Saturday Night Live. So. <laughs> hey, Dallas she totally does Dallas look like Nick Banker right? Puppet Obama. We know you're watching. We love you, buddy. <laughs> Just kidding. We don't really love you, but. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Justin. Anything that's coming up soon? What are you looking forward to? What's your channel uh, about before closing in? And uh, we'll settle it there. Yeah, and thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. Um, so what I've been focusing on a lot, um, I like uh, doing media manipulation. Um, I also, um, basically, lately I've been f uh, covering a lot of things. Uh, the Ebola a little bit. I have been taking a break for the past week. I've been doing a, a bit of traveling over the past month. Um, and it's just really hard to get spread out, so I just like uh, watching what you guys have been doing. Um, but I'm not sure, Jeff, uh, guys, uh, we were talking about Moncton, but uh, did you hear that uh, Justin Bork just uh, confessed to five counts? Go figure. It was, yeah, it was it was two first degree, and or three first degree, and two, um, I think, manslaughter or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, um, but uh, I'm I'm actually just looking into the research on that now, and I was thinking about just doing a, a recap on that, um, especially really? there. Yeah, yeah. I was uh, I'm just kind of putting all the info together now, um, so that should be out within the next week or so. And actually, I think I'm, I was planning on. Um, uh, just, well, I have my name changed to the Ottawa Expositor. It was originally under Justin Bryant. Um, so I think I'm just going to keep it as uh, Ottawa Exposer. So I'm just doing a little bit of a remodeling of my uh, channel and then uh, a little bit more like audio and stuff like that. So Nice. So um, remodeling renovation. I like it. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, I think, I think I'm up <laughs> hey, to like 370. He's working in those parliament buildings. That's a nice uh, you're, you're, setup. You're, you're, you're moving around the furniture there on your channel. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And thanks. I love those parliament buildings. Actually, one of the, um, one of the main covers that I use, um, it's like four towers on a bank or whatnot, um, you'll see the Canadian flag that's at half-mast. Um, I'll use it on my next video. And that half-mast was done, on, was taken, I took that picture, um, that was for Justin Bork's yeah. uh, slain yeah. officers. <laughs> so yeah, I didn't even realize that until afterwards, but uh, those spires are uh, really something. If you ever uh, get a chance to go to Ottawa, take a look into them. Um, I'm going to be doing a report actually on it as well. Um, I have eternal a lot of fire? pictures of all the occult <laughs> symbolism all over it. I put out that eternal fire one night, by the way. <laughs> yeah, the uh, the spires, of course, the, the the big, the great spire on the One World Trade Center. Oh, he's talking about the spire. The I thought he said fire, <laughs> <laughs> the eternal flame. Anyways, no thank man, you come everyone. on. <laughs> <laughs> thank you all for tar p taking part, and uh, we'll see you all next week. We had a great show, and uh, I want to thank all our listeners for tuning in to We'll Do It Live, and we're gonna do it again next week. So uh, turn <laughs> into the Real Alternative Podcast. Yes. Red Pill. Any last words? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Thank you, man. I just want to say, uh, again, yeah, for me, uh, for my part, thank you so much, everyone, for listening. It's gonna get better and better as we go along. It's still learning this process with Google Hangouts and this whole, you know, how that goes. But uh, thank you again. And the next broadcast, I believe, will be on Free Radio Revolution. Yeah. Awesome, and, guys. And uh, so there you go. So thanks, guys, everyone. Appreciate the work. Appreciate all of you guys. Thanks for having me on, guys. Justin, uh, Aaron, everyone, uh, uh, Dave, thank you all. And, and Chrissy have a Tokyo. Next week. Yep. Uh, and Chrissy Tokyo and Kate Slate, thank you so much. Kate Thanks, Slate, Kate, uh, for moderating. Room, yes. But, but uh, Kate, uh, Chrissy Tokyo, thank you as well, okay? Yeah. You're welcome. Awesome, guys. Thank you, everyone. We'll see all you right. next week. Yep. Have a Take care, guys. <laughs>